That's what you have to do. That's what's going to get them over the line, Wolf. Um, I, I, I think that that might, that might be it. It's definitely going uh, a little bit too far back. Is Renekton going to be banned away alongside the Rumble, obviously, as we dive into the draft here for our very first game of Round Robin 2? Fate was never really known for AD mid picks. So I do like this LeBlanc ban quite a bit. Very strong into a lot of meta picks right now. And, you know, a lot of people associate Fate with his namesake, uh, the TF, but I always think of Fate as one of the best Syndra players we had on the east side. Yep. Uh, obviously very far from the meta right now, but I am curious what he's got up his sleeve today. I mean, it's just so unusual to see a player basically brought out of virtually retirement um, yeah. like Cougar was, you know, to, to be put on a big stage like this. And he hasn't been away for that long, as uh, Quantum Freaks are going to be able to lock away the Ezreal. This is uh, a very good sign. Uh, if you watched uh, the Quantum Freaks loss last time around, like you were talking about, you know, the Senna Scion did not look very good at all. And they were kind of not putting the same kind of priority on the Ezreal like we were seeing from them uh, previously, where Leaper was using it pretty much as a crutch, right? Like, yeah. his performances on this champion were looking very, very good, as Bro... Morgan just going to lock away the Cassante. Interesting choice. I mean, this this feels really rocky for Bro because the bands are so smart. They have first pick, so they can take away uh, Envy Zeri. This is basically playing Zeri and Ezreal, right? Okay, Zeri's gone. We get the stronger first pick, Ezreal. You took away the LeBlanc, which is a strong AP mid champion right now when the Corky and Tristana are gone. And then you took away Morgan's Renekton. Now he blind picks the Cassante, so you have to counter pick Nar just at the ready here. The question becomes, what is Bulldog going to play in this draft? Because the Corky was taken away. And the, of course, uh, Tristana was banned. And we kind of just go to Yone here at the LCK, don't we? So we got a Lucian, but it's been more Yone as of late. You can get both of these, the Yone and the Sejuani here. And it's a really strong rotation for Kwangdo Freaks. I like it a lot. No worries about uh, permafrost situations as well. Um, I know that, I think it's Chronicler and I that are the most upset about uh, compositions that lack permafrost synergy. So very good to see that there is at least a melee solo laner alongside the Sejuani. The this does mean that uh, Envy does get Ash, and he was pretty good on this champion, honestly, yep. last time around. So they are going to be able to lock that one in, grab that double AD carry combo. Yeah, interesting to see uh, that one get you know, slipped through this far in the draft, and Braum is still at the moment, will likely be banned, but still available, so there's some real potential for a fiery lane down there, and Ash does so well with so many different AD carries into Ezreal, so there's definitely a power point here in this draft for the side of Bro. Banning the Aatrox, and not the Gnar here. Yeah, and of course, that is because it's Dudu, and uh, he just kind of wins games by himself on Aatrox, so I think denying that does make some sense. I wonder if they'll just ban both. That seems like a pretty easy call. Yeah, I think protecting the uh, Morgan's lane makes the most sense here, unless they just want to throw out a Leona ban. Uh, but I think if you're going to play Braum, then maybe you just don't care. You'll just pick Braum and then uh, and then call it a day. I feel like that Braum's got to be the ban here for Kwangno Freaks in that second spot. I'd be much more concerned with that. There's a little ban Poppy, which has been another popular pick on the east side into the Cassante. Very doo-doo focused yeah. bans as well, right? I mean, the Braum is so powerful here. Yeah, I like Gotta take it away. And they do they do deny it. But are they bold enough to play something wild in this bottom lane? Like Callista Ash, Ash Varus. And will it be something like a Zyra locked in here for Doi? We don't necessarily know what he's uh what he's been cooking. Yeah, he's been mostly playing AD jungles for most of his career. As they'll actually look to take the Leona away, it looks like here. Very Ooh. strong lane and a great deny pick. Yeah, and this shows that they feel like the priority on Le Leona is enough to get her over the line in any sort of like counter matchup option that Ando might have available. We know that they do like to cook there towards the bottom side Arma of the map. And Gnar seem pretty easy in terms of winning lane here. Yep. But that does mean that your follow-up engage for the Sejuani is very limited. So we might see something else here. It might be something like a Rel. They want to set up the Yone more. I think it's really up to CV Max as to which he thinks they need more in this draft. Is locking a Corky down can be quite tricky because of his Valkyrie. So if you don't have great engage, you don't have a lot of follow-up for that Sejuani, it does feel a little bit rough and 
Looks like they're going to opt for the Rakan here into the Leona. Okay, I like this much more. Yeah, Ali. I mean, both uh, Rakan and Alistar aren't necessarily lane options, right? Like, if if they wanted to just go for the win lane, then it would have been something else. But there's the Zyra for Doiv. So, Breon, it's a great draft. Again, it's a great draft, Wolf. I'm so worried that we're going to look a little bit silly because it's been execution that Breon have really struggled with. On the side of Quantum Freaks, also, I think that, like, this composition works. It's uh, it's definitely a bit heavy on the physical damage, but there is some mix coming through from the Ezreal and the Yone. So I think that they're going to be okay there. Like, these my, are two very robust drafts. My eyes are going to be on the level one in the bottom lane and how well Envy can push the Ash advantage because obviously Alistair level one is kind of not a champion. And if you can get an edge on that Ezreal early, that's going to be a power point you can play through with the Zyra. You pass bottom, you put the pressure on, maybe force them out of lane and then you can get some advantages there. Because otherwise, I'm not ready to trust in his first return game here that Fate is going to have a fantastic quirky game into Bulldog's Yone, which he's not in our top three Yones or anything like that, but he has had some really nice laning phases on this pick. And the Gnar in the, the top side is definitely going to be an issue early. So if the bottom lane has any issues for any reason early, that's when I start to get very worried for Bro. Uh, mid game, yeah. Passivity aside, and other, other problems this squad has, if they fall behind in that bottom lane for any reason that they should have a huge advantage in, that's what makes me scared. Yep, the thing that makes me scared is uh, is Doi versus Cuz. Not necessarily the champions that they are wielding, but just the players in general. Cuz is very scary, Doi is very new. Let's jump into the rift for game one. All right, I got the copium for you, Wolf. Yeah. Uh, I figured it out. So, Bro, really good at early game plans, right? Zyra, very good if she can get going early. Yes. If you set her behind, you know, step on all of her seeds, then things can really start to become a little bit of a problem. Um, or she gets set up and she power clears and everything is so fast yeah. and it's all well-oiled machine. Bro can do that because yeah. they know early games. They do know early games. They have the early control bottom side. She's going to path bottom. And because it's Ash at level one, there's no way for there to be an invade or some sort of tricky play here from Cuz. As Matt Doiv has really been put on the spot here. They're like, let's see yeah. how quick he, he can clear. Exactly. Let's see how many of these seeds he's going to be able to get in the right positions. I love how everyone hates Shaco. It's like, oh, he puts the boxes down. I hate that Shaco clear. But when it's Zyra, it's like, ooh, that's really cool. Like <laughs> if, it's, if it's not the same thing, Alice. I mean, it kind of is, but it also kind of isn't, you know. <laughs> it's a, it's about, like, you got to try and get all of the seeds and get all, like, activate all of them with the Q. It's very generous, by the way. You, you just need to have the Q somewhat near the seeds. And they'll be like, oh, is it my time? And, the, and they pop up and everything's okay. Uh, I feel like like we, we saw this in our last series as well. I feel like we're getting the Zyra cam every time just to make sure that we're figuring out whether they're doing it correctly or not as we've got an engage towards the bottom side. Envy getting very aggressive. Cleanse already coming out. The Flash also having to be invested here in the early game. All right, maybe that's why Samba's not coming in as Envy looking pretty good alongside Polo in this early game. Yeah, you know, I, I did say I wanted my eyes to be on the bottom lane at level one, but we got to watch some Zyra plants and that was cool. And then we saw <laughs> Envy come down and then take uh, take Leaper's summoners away. And that uh, that's a pretty huge edge and that's gonna feel real nice for Doiv if he wants to try to make another play down there bottom side without the cleanse. If he can connect a route, that will be pretty huge as a little bit inopportune moment. Yeah, this is not... I, so many of our stats come up at exactly the wrong times. This is a pretty sad time for the stats to come up. Of course, you know, making it back into the lane um, shouldn't be too much of a difficulty here for Leaper and Andal, but not exactly the optimal start, like you were saying earlier, Wolf. Back uh, to plants. Yeah. Uh, Doiv going to continue having plants, using the plants, and all of the plants doing planty things and everything's fine. But uh, this could be a very early plate for Bro. And... It's so bro, isn't it? Look at this beautiful early game. Everything just the way they want it to go. Yes, I know here you're comes saying the Zyra. Atlas, it's three minutes, but Doiv is down here looking to try and get something done as this ward is going to spot him out. Cuz moving away as well. I think he's just going to be telling his bottom lane to play it safe as Fate 
that's one heck of a re-debut. Yeah. Be trading really well here with Bulldog. Of course, you know, range versus melee and stuff like that. It's going to be a rough time for Bulldog. But uh, Bulldog is used to playing the Corkies and the Tristanas. And he's not necessarily one of our... Uh, now, Yone guys necessarily. Yeah, I feel like he's had some good some good games and some good laning phases on it, but but nothing to compare to even like BDD's Yone. Yeah, it's, it's not like the Yahoo situation as Cuz is going to be able to find the knock up here onto Fate, who's just going to have to flash. Wanted to kind of sidestep there. Didn't have enough man uh, mana for Valkyrie, I don't think, nor did he actually have it. He might have actually used that uh, previously to try and move away, but... Not entirely sure. Still, a little bit of a shame there that he has to use the flash right as we were complimenting his early aggression. Yeah. Uh, he's punished for it completely. That's just because, man, he knows where he needs to be. He knows where the pressure points are. Not going to be able to bail this bottom lane out into the Zyra, which is find himself getting rooted and then lose a bunch of his health bar. But mid lane, with the Corgi trying to push there, that's a place he can put the pressure on, gets the flash. And Leaper, he's half the CS, unfortunately, right now of Envy with a great play from Paulo down there on the bottom side to set Envy up for getting both of those sums. And this Ash lane is going according to plan, doing what it says on the tin, as we often say. And, uh, you know, this is the kind of advantage you want to see from Bro in 100%. the early game. Very true. And, oh, no. Oh, no, he's all good. Oh, he's nailed it, nailed it, nailed it. Catches it with the, 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 the Q there. That was super right. optimal because he, he just autos and walks away. Ooh, what's the difference between just regular optimal and super optimal? Uh, it looks cooler when he's like, calculate, I don't need the end of that plant, and walks away with one more. Ah, uh, okay, okay. That's what I like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, l l the less aware you are of, like, whether the optimal thing happened, the more super optimal it is. Yeah, no, he, it's like he knew he Didn't even need away. to use his brain to think about how yeah. good it was. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's perfect. Uh, that's going to be a Raptor camp stolen away here by Doiv, because looking unfazed by the whole situation, understanding how it's supposed to go in this matchup. And you know what Bro needs, it needed, and then we're able to solve and, and do like the Umpty Days is figure out that Bro activity, right? We yeah. talked about the early games, the advantages they've been able to muster. Paulo's definitely on uh, on that side. I want to introduce a new Bro term. It's oh. called Brositivity, um, which oh. is being positive that Bro can come back from the 0-9 deficit. And I'm going to try to implement that into our cast today, a little bit of Brositivity, because... That'd be a new one. Uh, because right now everyone's going, okay, nice leads here in the bottom lane. You know, the fate was putting the pressure on, obviously had to flash, so that's a little bit neutralized, but everyone's a little bit worried about what's gonna happen in the mid game. And I'm here to tell you, it's a new round robin, Atlas. And do you know what? Do you know the only thing you need to turn positivity into brositivity? What's that? Is just a smile. Yeah. Because you just put the put the smile under the, the curve of the P and you actually get brositivity. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you want just just smile, everyone, and then the bros are going to be fine. It's all just going to be perfect. Okay, Cuz is going to take a, uh, a, a a little um little grub. Oh, never mind the plant. Oh, I wasn't I wasn't positive enough. Yeah. I should have I should have known that he was just going to get that. You're working on it though. It's it, you know, I, mean, I, I like that was super optimal by the way because he didn't yes. even watch. Oh, you took oh. Out of my mouth. He, well, he he just walks away from those man. Oh. He's like, all right, the plants were like, I got your back last time. You walked away with the auto. This time you walk away and I'll get the last hit. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> there you go. It's beautiful. I just love that I asked you the question, and then you get to have, like, the perfect example of the situation happening immediately afterwards. Oh, oh. It's, it's really going well. Uh, not necessarily uh, for Quantum Freaks 100%, as this bottom lane is still in dire straits. Still, Leaper has been able to pick up a fair bit of the farm, right? Like, he's still that same wave behind, approximately, as Polo. Going to get thrown around here just a little bit. Does get a fair bit of value, actually, from the Aftershock damage. Yeah. yeah. Kind of nice. He's got Aftershock. He's got Eclipse. If it ever looks scary for Leona for just a minute, just know that she'll, it'll be it'll be fine in, in most cases. In it's the it's only ever scary after the Eclipse and the Aftershock go down. Yeah. Uh, before that, yeah, she's uh, she's vibing. She's chilling. She's having a good time. The um, other thing to note about Leaper, you know, we've spoken about this player's pretty wide open champion pool. I mean, you, Let's not talk about the Scion part of that, but he's played a lot of different <laughs> AD carries. Right, he showcased the Jin, the Zeri, uh, the Ezreal quite well early on in the season. But his two best picks have been the Ezreal and the Zeri, and he's on the Ezreal here. So even at a deficit here, maybe he will be able to pop off later on. That is definitely going to be the expectation in this game, as uh, they need his range to set up four objectives, and he is going to be offering some of that poke. He's definitely not on the list that, that Viper is on, but okay, hold up. Oh, he does get the control ward in. 
before the Zenith Blade could go out. I thought Polo was just going to pull the trigger on that one. Probably had an idea that Andor was moving up, though, so understanding that it was going to be a 2v2. As Doiv moving towards this mid lane as well. Cuz in the area, the 3v3 is on as Zenith Blade goes in. It's a fair bit of damage on Andor, who doesn't have the Unbreakable Will just yet. And the ulti comes out from Bulldog, gets two as Polo. So close to surviving, but first blood is going to come on through and Leaper now trying to answer as Doiv. That was a sick flash, but he still has to use the flash in trade for a headbutt as the arrow just barely going to miss. And Fate gets on over the wall, but cancels that auto, doesn't find the rocket. There's the flash. And he'll find that one. Cool guys, don't look at explosions. A one for one trade as both supports go down. Yeah, a lot of summoners expended here. Three down on the side of Breon just for the one of Andil there, so very expensive to trade that one back, but they are able to do it in the end. The kill goes over the Sejuani versus going over to the Corky, so that definitely favors the side of OK Savings Bank here as well. A very close exchange there that could have actually been worse for either side. A very flippy fight as we go back to this. And Palu, he set up the early sum take here or earlier, and now he's here once again going to engage onto this Alistair. But unfortunately, the damage follow up here just isn't enough. Bulldog tanks a bunch of it and then has a fantastic setup here with the ultimate. And, you know, obviously Flash is expanded. Doib's Flash there, fantastic. Will be traded for Andals. If the arrow comes out way earlier, I feel like this could have looked totally yeah. different. I'm a little bit shocked that one came so late, but at least Fate is able to secure this as his Flash comes up. He gets that kill. Well, having a look back in this mid lane, it looks like kind of we've just respawned and we're, we're repeating the whole situation. Is that, that was a satisfying Phosphorus bomb. Thank you for that one, Fate. Uh, still, I believe there was a little bit of an attempt at a dragon um, before, but then they, they lost interest in that. And we're now resetting this vision. A lot of vision in this bush on the river. Indeed. And Doiv has a mask, but hasn't upgraded it to the, the really cool Bernie mask. So not at real full power. First power spike here for the Zyra just yet. Still going to move in, and he's already pretty tanky Zeke's in hand. If they just play this slow, it's very frustrating for Kwangdong Freaks to actually crack here because they don't have bot side prio. And if he just sets up his plants, they sit on this. They should be able to take this streak. As Morgan going to very nicely avoid the ultimate just out of range of that one. So Dudu's still putting on the pressure. Playing pretty well here in this top lane. 20 CS in the lead. They are not going to do the dragon. Paulo just going to hover here in mid and let Cuz rush these down. And you know, just a little bit slow on the uptake on this one. Now there is a Rift Scuttle here as well as a ward in the pit. Paulo's going to take the opportunity to back here. And they're just really hesitant on this one. But I think they should. Be able to take this, but now they've waited so long. Cuz is coming down. That's not the proactivity I was looking for. Well, there's the arrow. It's going to connect Solar Flare. Lay it on top of the Grasping Roots. It was beautiful from the bros. And Cuz is going to go down as well. That's what they were waiting for. Well, there's the answer. Yeah. OK, so I get it now. All right, let's wait for them to start walking to the dragon. And we line up the arrow. The arrow comes through, and then bam, chain CC. Take out the Yone, take out the Sejuani. They wanted a dragon and two kills. That's what they were waiting for. Doib said, hold up. Let's not do the dragon unless we can get two kills as well. Now this Quirky has a second one. Oh, man. And, and that's, that's the positivity. Yeah. As Envy is holding this arrow out, Palu flashes to be able to follow up on the engagement. Palu today, he is on something, man. Like, he hits everything there. And he flashes during the arrow, which is... Do you know what I, I think trust. it is? Because if you've noticed, guys, Doi and Polo are both really tall. Yeah. So do you know what they can do? Oh, okay, never mind. We've got a little bit of an engage here. Is Bulldog going to take a lot of damage? Okay, so here's my theory. Yeah. Polo and Doi can actually just look over at each other because they're about a head taller than everybody else on their team. And so they can make eye contact and then go for these sick plays. So their level of coordination <laughs> is actually a whole lot higher than any other support <laughs> jungle duo. Because they have to do it purely based on voice. Yeah, they just look left and right. Yeah, that's my theory. But they just nod. Yeah, they, they can just nod at each other. With you know? Giga chat expression on uh -huh. the Uh-huh. And so the other players can be having a conversation and they just look on over at each other and like, it's time. You know? It's perfect. It may be time for Morgan to get ganked. It could. Time. Yes. Uh, Cuz is going to be considering that one. It might also be Dudu just going to kill the turret. 
And uh, that is likely to be exactly what's going to happen here. There's also a cow, and Morgan's going to all out of there and then uh, just mitigate some CC and walk his way through. So that is going to be that. Still, first turret blood going on over to Kwandong Freaks, who now claim back this gold advantage. This is once again, bro, playing through Envy, playing bottom side. Doiv is only down there. And this means Morgan's left on an island. What's his KP right now? Zero. This yeah. is It's like the key points of the match that we had earlier just all coming back up. Doiv? Oh, okay, that is going to be the Glacial Prison going a little bit wide. Calculated! Doiv oh, he got it again! He just doesn't, he's like, I just walk away. Whether it's my plant that does it, my auto that does it, or my feet that do it, I don't look back <laughs> I walk away. I, I, if I'm young, Jay, I'm like, oh man, they're going to take me back to the rental store. Like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not needed anymore. This guy's having a great day. And he's given the resources to Envy, he's given Fate those opportunities along with Paulo to pick up some kills early. But this does mean that Gnar is a big problem. A full turret oh, going yeah. over to Kwangdong Freaks is basically all of their gold lead right now. 1,700 of it, <laughs> as I was making the point. Uh, we're, we're linked to me in production today. All on this Gnar. And uh, the, so sometimes there are some top laners in the LCK where you'd be like, oh, they've got a lead. Let's hope they can use it. I mean, this is Dudu. He is the guy that, in their most recent win, did just win it by himself. He did. And he, it was not like the flanking Aatrox found the flank and joined his team. It was the flanking Aatrox found four people and killed them all by himself. So on this Nah, certainly a similar energy, a similar uh, capability uh, for Dudu in this game as the bros setting up to try and siege down this turret. And I don't want to take away from the positivity because I think it's a great yeah. word, um, but they do need to be careful. Yeah. Um, bottom lane, Dudu is got, getting half a turret here. Top lane, a lot of minions being deleted. His fate's going to try to run up there. He doesn't have teleport to try to catch that. So a lot of lost CS on the map here, a lot of turret damage, and they saved the mid turret. So this definitely feels really good for the side of Kwangdong Freaks here. Yep. Not able to open up the map here for the bros. There is uh, one minute on this Chemtech Drake, and it does mean that it's likely going to be an Ocean Soul because it's, you know, monsoon season here in Seoul, so that would make some sense as oh dear. Um Morgan is uh, getting some deja vu as he's going to push Andal back in, but he's still put in prison and taken down. He is, he is definitely just not getting very much help uh, today. <laughs> yeah, his... Um Death participation stats going up. Yes, uh, definitely really good kill participation for Quanong Freaks um, yeah. for Morgan in this game. Well, they are able to gank him twice, the first time to get a turret, the second time to get a kill and a turret. So again, Nar has a lot of money in this game, and yes. that is just going to continue to be the case. It's going to be a side lane threat as Libra and Andal try to defend this turret. It will be a turret in trade here to be uh, back to the brazativity. Yep. The other outer is also very valuable. Yeah. Another thing, I mean, that's a good point, as well as Cassante's itemization this game, even from behind, he's still going to maintain relevance because there's no magic damage really for him to worry about. Yes, some mixed damage on the Ezreal, but overall it's very easy for Morgan to itemize and still be extremely efficient into Yone and the Ezreal. So that's a good thing, you know, just keeping it positive. Yep, yep, yep. And when does positivity turn into Bropium? Um, around 25 minutes in this game. <laughs> 25 minutes, that's a lot of Bropium, I think, as I think we're already getting to that stage as the bros, this is often collapse point, right? Like this is, this is like mid game. It's when we sort of stop figuring out these uh, proactive plays or the proactive plays, I should say. And it doesn't quite work. As Dudu's just as killing turrets, man. He's like, I, I've, I've just been left alone, and I'm going to kill turrets. And he is two levels up on Morgan. And he's going to have two items so incredibly soon. One of them going to be a Black Cleaver, and that's going to make all of this armor feel less good. Yes. Uh, the Morgan's going to be building as well. Yeah, side lanes, they belong to the Nah. He might as well just transition to a hull breaker at this point. That's a really good point. <laughs> like, I mean... He's just he's just uh, in a side lane at 17 minutes, taking multiple turrets off the map. He's got two thirds of an out or sorry inner on top side here, and uh, he's 50 CS up nearly. Uh, it's just a big problem that Bruff deal with because yeah, you got the 80 carry meta where we have double 80 carry. I wouldn't call Yone an 80 carry per se because he's melee, but 
You got a second one on this Gnar, and he's going to be doing a lot of damage in teamfights. Not just going to be engaged, a big side lane threat that Bro do not have the answer to right now, and quickly losing control of this Dragon Pryo as well, as also knows Leaper is pushing in this mid wave. Someone's going to have to answer that. And it's interesting that we're we're putting so much emphasis on getting control of the river right here. I mean, there's going to be no Dragon for four minutes' time. Um, but they're just trying to make sure that they can move down here and secure the last few bits of this health bar on this bottom out of tower. As Polo could be in trouble. Snapback does come through for Bulldog, though, as now Doi is being closed in on. He flashes out. Beautiful use of the strangle thorns as Bulldog tried to get over the wall to find the Zyra, but she went the other direction. And speaking of which, Bulldog is now completely on the wrong side of the map. It's a disaster. Envy almost finds the volley as well to kill Leaper. And Morgan, he picks up a kill. The bros are well and truly back in it now. Oh, yeah. We're rolling down the hill. And, oh. like, th this was all a group for Kwangdong Freaks to, as you mentioned, defend the turret. But I think they thought that they, with enough control, could actually punish a bro that didn't have their own outer here, bottom side, so no real retreat where they could, they could find no way out of this. And you can see the setup here. And you have a, a true shot barrage as well to layer on top of it. You're just simply outnumbered at this point, though, and Fate outplays Bulldog. And then Bulldog decides after this, as we'll see Doi flash over the wall, to try to chase him, but he's just too short range. Like, yeah, you had enough range to get over the wall, but whether Doi was left or right, I think doesn't necessarily matter because you just can't get to him. The rest of your team has to bail out, and down you go. And even Envy almost getting that kill onto the Ezreal, taking away his summoners once again. Leaper now. Summonerless on this Ezreal that is nowhere near as accelerated as the Ezreal as we saw in our previous series with Deft. And the bros just keep rolling on. Yeah, man, th this is, the bro activity is continuing, you know? And it, it, it's like every time they, they find the next level up, it's like the next five minutes gets added onto the clock where the bros have an idea, know exactly what to do, and are making the right moves. Right now, it's still continuing. I mean, we can't count chickens or anything like that, but certainly looking good. Let's see if they can crest the 25 minute mark. You know, that's the most yeah. dangerous time. And they're still behind, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's still like this Gnar is absolutely gigantic. Dudu wasn't in the last fight. It's a large reason why the bros were winning, because in that isolated moment, they had more money. Yeah, a, a about 2,500 um, gold lead uh, level of sizable missing amount of gold and items in that last fight that yes. uh, he is going to be holding when we do get to objective fights that are on. It is Ocean Soul this game. Still going to be relatively valuable, especially for dealing with some of that Ezreal poke. Yep. And uh, yeah, 2,500 gold. Thank you, production. We're on the same page. We're linked. Uh huh. Um, and you, you look at the game state here, and it's definitely still winnable for Bro if they can clutch out some team fights. But if Kwangdong Freaks just avoid this you know, this period where Ezreal is very far away from his second item, you know, that two item spike, and just side lane this Gnar and play around him, shadow him a little bit, then I think they're going to be fine to weather the storm. And that's the problem for Bro. You've got to keep up the Bro activity. And you've got to try and find ways to fight when you see Dudu in a lane killing minions. Because if you do that and they can find a member of Quantum Freaks, then they can get these picks. They can start moving towards Barons and things like this. Yeah. And that's when they can get some real advantages. And that's the, this is the kind of comp they have. They have Ash, they have Leona, they've got great follow-up. It's, it's a comp that can definitely set picks up very easily. They've got tons of damage on this Corky, who also can follow up at quite a large amount of range if he is going to be involved in one of those gank squads. I'll tell you what, though, I've been pretty impressed with how Bro have been making it to objectives first. Yeah. Right? You can see here, They've got all of the vision set up, Banana Brush covered, moving into the enemy base to try and sort that one out as well. High value, True Shot Barrage does come on through from Leaper. That's a good one. As Grasping Roots connects onto Kuz, Morgan looking for an opportunity here is due to a little bit far away, he and he needs bar. to be involved in this fight. That is 100%. Now the Yone is the one that's a little bit further away from this one. The Naba, like you were talking about, looking fantastic here for Dudu right now. Bulldog's on the cross, but I think Fate is happy to push him away. Bulldog decided to TP mid instead of joining his team, so now he's kind of cut off, weirdly enough, hoping that Bro are going to play this slow as they often do, but... Indecisive here from yeah. Bro. Yeah. Trying to work out whether they want to defend this inner turret. They're going to lose it, and they might also lose the fight here if things go wrong. 
Doiv setting up the plants now. Dudu is mini nah in this moment as they look to engage onto Andal. He throws down the ultimate though, and now the Glacial Prison going wide. Bulldog making his way in. The pulverize onto three is gigantic, but Andal still suffering. The bros somehow all alive until finally the supports are traded. The Quantum Freaks, they take in a turret, they take Dragon, they win the objective. They win the objective, it's a trade of kills. But so much of this, like you said, was indecisive for Bro. They couldn't decide whether they wanted to hold the aggro on the Dragon and just focus that down, or deal with the Gnar that's split pushing, or try to collapse on the Bulldog in mid. And they kind of ended up making no decision here until they decided to go on to the Alistair. But this buys so much time. And look at where Fate is in this fight. Look at where Envy is. There's just not a whole lot of damage being layered through. And yes, Bulldog goes a bit deep here, does end up surviving until ultimately goes down. But the objective win is the key one. And the fact that they were able to do this with Dudu not having his Narbar and with how split Kwangdong was in that situation is not a good sign. The fact that that went so close for Bro and they lose the objective when they had so much control moments before makes you worried about if they're going to be able to get it together and play as a five-man unit here because they've got their loner out. They have a brand new mid laner. Bro's Synergy as a, as a team that played together for a long time, obviously for an entire round robin, still isn't up to some of our other te Eastern team standards, but with two missing pieces here, definitely feels like it's a little bit shakier. It's true. However, I'm looking at them and I'm like, 204, 203. These guys are feeling like they're all right. The coordination, like you were talking about, that may not necessarily be there. It's still starting to feel like, as far as the individual play is concerned, it's just fine for Bro. Just They've got let's, the get them on, let's get them on the same page Yeah, and uh, stay Bro active. You know, that's what we got to do. Well, Polo going to be Hex flashing in. I like that. It's good vibes. And yeah. Bro going to move back towards the back. Like, look at all of these plants. Like, Doiv is ready to destroy yeah, he's, the, he's, the, okay. the Baron as Arrow is going to connect on to Leaper. Let's see whether they can get anything done. Double Pulverize here from Andal. Cuz, look at to make his way in. There is the Glacial Prison on to Polo. Solar Flare doesn't quite get the stun on to Bulldog. And unfortunately, Polo just a little bit too far in and Bro not able to find a true engage. Yeah, unfortunately for Bro, like once again, they're pulling the trigger on the Baron as the rest of the team is going into a choke point here into Kwangdong Freaks and Leaper just bounces away, doesn't have to cleanse or anything. There's no follow-up. They lose their Baron control. They lose their plant setup here in Quantum Freaks. So, all right, cool. Back to, to you know, standard practice here. Dude is at level 16. He's in the side lane. We have full control over the map. They're pushing mid. They're pushing top. Yep. It's uh, just kind of back to business. As Envy at least is still winning in this 1v1, as we can see. Uh, Leaper looking a little worse for wear as Envy does have those first couple of items completed. We'll see what he can actually put together as he does go back to base now. Kraken Slayer Shiv is done, but doesn't really feel like it's that much damage yet for the Ash. As you can see, this connection on the arrow, just fantastic, but Andil playing Keeper so well. Yeah, and unfortunately for Paulo, he's just the last one out, and it's the same point you made earlier. When the Aftershock and the Eclipse wear off, that's when you should be worried about the Leona. And she's just not able to rejoin the rest of the team that tried to force their way through that choke point there, seeing the angle with the Ash Arrow. Could have tried to use that for a turn on the Baron damage they have because they have this Zyra sitting on two items, 204, like you mentioned moments before, but they were split in their call. Bulldog should be able to get out of here just fine, but maybe they can get some damage done to this turret. I'm, I'm just so concerned not about the kills and the items and the gold, but just the gameplay that I'm seeing here for Bro isn't inspiring me that they can get this done. and. We've seen this story a thousand times. Yeah, right, I said bro positivity. No, they'll get it done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the thing. We've got to stay positive. Try and uh, work out a way they can figure it out. As the Baron did take a few shots from someone that is uh, just going to be ignored for the moment. And everything is going to calm down just a little bit. Three items now for Fate. This guy's Corky is going to be pretty dangerous. And he was certainly here in the LCK when we did have the big time Corky meta. Yeah, and he, uh, you know, he's been playing very well. I feel like he's been playing very consistently. His damage has been very good when he's given the opportunity to do so. It's just the team needs to be able to make decisive calls together. And there also needs to be a little bit less of a flame horizon. Yeah, that was, gonna, that was the next thing I was <laughs> going to bring up. I was like, should I wait 10 more CS or should we talk about it now? Um, the fact that we're 10 CS off of a flame horizon is uh, it's not not boating well, 
as no. Lenar is now on three items. And I mean, it, it is uh, Morgan being the one to like just take the L's, you know, like it was always going to be a difficult lane, right? But it's great when you can get something cross, but both top and bottom outer turrets are up for Guangdong Freak. So Bro hasn't been able to get anything done on the map while he weathers that said storm. Nor have they been able to set up any Ash Arrows. The problem is that Leaper is on such a mobile AD carry. They have this Alistair front line that's so hard to punish as well. Just haven't found that angle yet. Yeah. Just need to work on the rotations. That's that's the problem. Absolutely. Now moving over towards this Baron. Envy taking a bit of damage from the True Shot Barrage, but not a massive amount. Does have a Vampiric Scepter, so should be able to get that health back. As all right, Morgan thinks he might have found an angle. Solar Flare is going to get immediately cleansed of the slow. Glacial Prison does next to nothing. Just going to try and stop them as the flash forward from Polo. And there's the arrow. Let's see whether they can get in there. It's a brilliant uh, grasping roots to come out from Doi. They grab two. The entire bottom lane just eradicated. Crowd and speechless. Yeah, Bro are just going to be able to move over to the Baron. They should be able to take this. And Polo, he's just going to go in today, isn't he? Oh, oh, yeah. He just goes to see. Cuz is over here looking for a potential steal. He has Flash and Smite, but Paulo's just going to zone him out. Bulldog, again, on the cross, but nothing he can do here. And this is just a Bro Baron. Yeah. And, I mean, they're going to try to trade it for mid turret, but I think Bro's going to say worth on this one. And they managed to get it. Yeah. And the thing is, like, Dudu is just kind of like a don't-don't in, in this game, right? Like, he's just not there for any of these moments. And Bro are navigating it so, so beautifully. What well, you got to get for Ezra? You got to get his E. Got to get his cleanse, and then wait for it. Oh, got to get his flash. Then you can get him with the arrow. <laughs> <laughs> and then they also get the max range grasping roots as well, and it goes through the cow. Oh, well, like it's, it's poetry in motion. It's hard, isn't it? it's hard to catch an Ezreal, but if you can just follow these easy steps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you actually found the tin, didn't you? I know how to kill it. <laughs> oh, dear. You just have to have all these things go right on simultaneously. Paul yeah. though, Paulo is, he is 7 out of 8 KP, man. If bro in this game, he has got to be picking it up. Oh, yeah. Oh, what a game from this man. And and he, he is just all of the, the the bro activity right like he is the one making absolutely every single one of these moves and he's not stopping this is the best part is the fact that when it goes wrong do you know what he does as a response do it again yeah and see whether we can get it right this time he is going to be proactive from start to finish he said you guys are stopping bro activity around 20 to 25 minutes not me nope <laughs> and he's he's not and hopefully he's going to continue it through game two as well they finally as, shored up the gold diff for the yeah. top lane yeah it's yes flame horizon nearly happened but it's a three kill corky this ash is still relevant still great engaged still will do big damage when set up and look at look at fate he's just wandering off the handle he has to flash the arrow is going to connect once again and oh no leaper is going to pay for his sins and teleports coming in as well bro immediately moving towards this in a turret in the mid lane, they'll be able to at least chaperone this siege minion for a moment before they get to work, and they'll be able to take that one down. Is it base broken? It should be right now. Yeah. And it's a 3.2k Red Bull Baron power play. They've still got 45 seconds. They'll take an inhibitor turret and inhibitor. And they look at, wait, are they Dude, looking for the win? Out here. I mean, Dudu, yeah, exactly right. He is just backing now. As he will turn up, the Nabar in not a great position. And bro, see him, and they're like, all right, You've got your Nah here. You called your cousin. Okay, we're going to leave. Yeah, they're just going to leave. But they got the mid inhibitor. And that should be enough to help guarantee them Pryo for this third dragon for them. Fifth of the game, of course. Yeah, it just has been this Gnar on four items who is not going to hit the enemy champions. He will hit the Cassante. He's agreed to that. But otherwise, he just isn't going to fight. He has had his Gnar bar set once on that dragon fight in a good spot, but otherwise really hasn't shown up is this all starts off with Andil getting chunked down and Leaper ends up being the one who pays the price because he doesn't have sums. And th it's just the way that Bro are coordinated. And this is the, the ridiculous part is that they've been just, it's been a wheel of different players on this squad over and over again. I don't know, maybe something's clicked and they found it. Maybe this is the one. Well, I hope so. I hope they found something, right? Because it's been a lot of looking and not a lot of happy answers. I do uh, wonder, you know, 
what what I'm gonna say if after bro win their first game after a while, you know, great activity. <laughs> it's like pull pull base. Yeah, pull base back too. in, yeah. <laughs> uh, don't do it to me, Edgar. I'm sure it wouldn't happen. If they if they're gonna win this, then uh hopefully they, they just they just stick around. Tell you what though, it's they, never broke until it's broke though, Atlas, so it's not kind of chickens. That's early. true, that's true, that's true. Um, I tell you what though, Fate, a year out of the LCK, he comes oh, back, man, he's looking really good. I feel like the rest has done him good. I love the build too. Uh, you know, gets a, the a mortal reminder, yeah. yeah. The mortal reminder, I don't know why I call it Putrefire, it's been a while since we've seen that. <laughs> yeah, that's a different one. Um, but yeah, the mortal reminder, uh, just, you know, to get some of that yield. I mean, he's going for GA next, I mean, he's super big. Oh, they're trying to kill this Kasante, Hip up Bolt does connect, but I mean, there's not a lot of damage between Andal and Kuz. Uh, Dudu is fighting Polo, and Dudu is fighting. That's the big problem here, as they look to try and turn it. He gets out of the way of the Solar Flare, though. And this, uh, this, this Nara is, is frightening. And they still need to be very careful, as Morgan almost caught Bulldog, but Unbound Soul is going to help him out there. The poke is working, and Dudu is just not tanky. He's got a lot of damage, a lot of uh, split pushing uh, items, as there is another pickup of a flash to come through here from Polo. Yeah, Leaper is just perma no sums, man. It feels like he does have his cleanse still, but it's only one get out of jail free card. We know how it works, okay? I just explained yeah. it, so. That's soul point, though, and yeah. that is going to be ocean and soul Dudu, point. He's ready to kill the base. He's like, you guys can chase the Yone across the map if you want, but. You might want to look at the mini-map. I'm level 18, and I might be getting an inhibitor. Morgan is going to show up, yeah, play Horizon or no, and he's going to be able to clear these minions. But the next time Dudu shows up, he might be knocking on the Nexus turrets. Yeah, and this is, um, it, it was before Bro were doing things, and it was great, and everything was working. This was them teaming up and getting split and then outplayed and out-rotated 100%. I mean, this draft for Bro is really good at setting up for picks. It has a lot of damage, but at the same time, it, you know, it needs to all be together and work together as a, you know, four-man unit, essentially, maybe three, depending on who you've caught. But that also means you leave open pieces of the map. And because Quanu have been so good defensively with Andil, just leaves so many options for Dudu. Because, yeah, you got Leaper's Flash, but they got your Nexus or your uh, Inhibitor turret. So I think they'll trade that. Baron's back up. Bro have full control. Absolutely. An angry Yordle here who has TP and an Arbar nearly set. Uh, this will go down extraordinarily quickly, and Bro should be able to, if they can set up these seeds. I'll make the call together. Yeah, they, they need to just start it immediately. They will do so. Ezra are going to be helping out with the damage here as Cuz in the area. Morgan coming on over. They're going to look for the turn. Let's see whether they can take down this Sejuani. Does use the Q, gets himself out of there. Now Bulldog on the flank angle. Dudu in mini now right now. They do manage to find the Glacial Prison. Polu, he goes in. He's soaking up so much of this. And he'll also going to be taken out as Bulldog has to flash away. The rest of Bro all grouped up, and in comes the Nar. But it's the mini, and MV has got a beeline on top of him. Morgan gets his revenge, and he takes down the Yone as well. The, the roots will grasp, and they find Leaper. And Cuz is like, where did my team go? The bros are going to destroy us. The bros are going to destroy you. They're coming to your base right now. And Morgan, he may have been 100 CS down or more this game, but he's able to get the last lap on Duda, the one to take him out in the fight. And Leaper. No flash, has to cleanse, is zoned out, does very oh. little damage, and bro, they did it. They were not broken after all. All they needed was the Doiv to come in and Polo to start these fights as they're getting the depth treatment, but I don't think it's going to matter. There goes the Nexus, and round robin two is the bro's time to shine. They get their first win of the season. If we remember back to the Kwangdong curse, the most recent example, it was right at the turn of the round robin where they lost not once, but twice to Breon. Oh. And maybe history will repeat itself, Atlas, here. As bro fans in tears, you got you haven't won the series yet. It's not over. Yes, your top laner got Flame Horizon, but he killed the Nahar in the end. Yeah, yes, and I, I did get off. a little bit ahead of myself because they have, of course, won games so far this season. So they haven't won the series yet. Still, I feel like they also haven't won many, like, first games of a, of, of a series either. So being able to pick one up here, definitely a, uh, a big one for Bro. But I, I do need to catch myself, you know, before I start celebrating too early. It does feel like this is a much better performance that's for the, the Bros. That's the positivity I want to see in the crowd, though. Yeah. We've got some Western Bro leavers here as well. I saw them on the way in. We've always got the Western Bros. 
And I mean, it's emotional because this team is winless. They're zero and nine, and they finally pick up at least oh one win. Oh my God. That is, a, that is a bit of a, a, a mid-diff situation there as far as damage is concerned. The Jack Shows Bulldog did not do a lot. Yeah. And the ridiculous thing is that Morgan in that last fight was so much more valuable than Dudu because Bro fought around the Narba so perfectly that he wasn't able to have that huge impact with all of the money that he had. Oh, man. Very, very impressive stuff here from Bro with the way that they stayed coordinated right until the very end. See whether they can do it again for game number two, though. We're going to have to go to a short break. When we get back, the space is going to break it down. We'll see whether Bro can win a series. あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ
I think Corky Ash is better than Corky Cassante. The Cassante yeah. pick, um, you know, blind and what like about... first round just wasn't all that necessary. Could have also gone Corky Leona and, you know, just left the jungle pick a little bit more up in the air for Doive since the Zyra is banned away, but... Yeah, like, I don't know about this. Yeah, I mean... This time, I think they will ban the Gnar if Quantum Freaks don't grab it. Sejuani Gnar that Brendan was calling for, Valdez over there on the space, I think maybe the rotation we see instead this time. As the one thing I will disagree with on, on the space discussion about the, the mid-jungle synergy is Talia Viego, Talia Vi, like that's the mid-jungle synergy we see for this team. That's like the setup. When it's Bulldog on Talia and it's the Viego or the Vi, that's when we've seen it. But this one, yeah, I do agree. Didn't look great in game one, and we haven't really seen them utilize this pick uh, setup all too much, but it wouldn't be a CV Max series and a CV Max round robin two if we weren't just kind of run it back. Yeah, this is uh, feeling a little bit CV Max. Um, I would have liked to have seen a complete revamp. And there's the edge. We're just going to just, it's, 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 it's a salty run back. It's slightly different order, um, but ultimately nothing is actually going to change outside of the Zyra is impossible to pick. I think this time they will ban the Aatrox and the Gnar. Yes. And they will leave the Poppy as the space indicated should have been the case. Uh, and obviously the Poppy is going to have a lot of power on objectives. And with Bro's indecision, you know, that could be a huge boon for Guangdong if they want to opt into that. But I do think it's very wise to remove the ability for Dudu to Flame Horizon if they're just going to leave this Cassante on an island. The thing is, though, they still won. So Alistair. maybe they just don't uh, really care as much. Alistair is going to be uh, the ban. I don't know whether that, like, I think you may as well just go back to the Poppy ban if that's the case. Yeah, because, I mean, that was one of the big reasons why they had that power at level one. The Braum is still insanely powerful. That has to be banned again in this setup Yep. as they get the Leona again. And, I mean, if it's Rakan they pick up instead this time, that's not going to be really all that inspiring to me. I'd rather see Karma, and the Gnar is, once again, the obvious choice here. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know what else to say. It could just be Gnar Rel as well. If Ander wants to go down that path, there's still plenty of engage options for the bottom lane. Yeah, Rel can deal with Leona okay in the, in the bottom lane. Yep. Uh, we, in fact, saw it in the last series. Wasn't actually able to win, but uh, we saw it in lane. It was kind of all right. This is what I was worried about. And this is more difficult to play. I think the bottom lane is going to be a repeat of what we saw last time around. And there's the brand. This is just the other, uh, you know, mage you can play in the jungle. Works very similarly to that of the Zyra, just without quite as much CC uh, in the form of the Grasping Roots and the Strangled Thorns. So there were two major changes in bands. The Alistair ban to come through and the Zyra ban. Those champs replaced by the Rakan for Kwangdong Freaks, and in this case, the Brand for uh, OK Savings Bank Breon. Very similar drafts in terms of what they do. The Zyra clear, you know, in, and the Brand clear, not all too different. Obviously, Zyra can go a little bit faster. It's a better start. Isn't going to have the same power on rushing down objectives, but that's not really what Bro utilized it for anyways. Doesn't have the same sort of dive potential as the follow-up we saw from the Zyra last game around. So definitely some pieces missing there. But what it does have is massive amounts of damage into choke points. And if Quan are going to keep walking into choke points where Bro are waiting, you know, maybe there's there's an argument to be made this could be an upgrade, actually, for OK Savings Bank Breon. And there were a lot of skirmishes as well, right? And I think Brand does flourish in those moments as well. If you can sort of just turn up and augment some of your, your teammates that are already starting fights and... Apollo definitely was doing that. And the fact that he gets back on the Leona again, I think is really huge for Breon because he can just carry that momentum from game number one, move it straight into game two, and uh, it can feel really, really good. A very similar draft for the Kwandong Freaks and for OK Savings Bank Breon. But I think that with the slight adaptations, the slight changes, it's going to work out better perhaps for Bro. Let's see if it does. We're up into the rift. All right. Bro fans, pretty loud. I do also like that Doiv is gone for the zombie brand skin because it's got green fire and it's bro. And they're, they're a green team. That's right. And that's very, very cool to coordinate uh, with your team colors. You want to see it. Yep.
Level one, incredibly strong for Bro with this draft. So they are going to be pushing the envelope down here on the bottom side of the map. Won't find anything with it except a deep ward on the top side. Morgan just going to be playing defensively. Will be a ward in return. So Cuz will have some information about Doiv's start. Yep. And guess what? Both junglers are going to pass bottom because it's Nash lane. And that's just how it has to go. So that leaves Morgan on an island like he was in game one. And they're going to be well, uh, walking on over here as Doiv looking to try and keep himself a little bit more invisible. It's an interesting situation as far as the start is concerned. It's going to be uh, Dudu now pushing Morgan away. That ward is so valuable because it allows Dudu to know he can push up to try here and get a free auto. Oh, Ando going to have his bone plating broken. It's a good start here as already they're putting so much pressure on once again. I've seen this. Someone before. is flashing. Exactly. This time it's Ando. It's Ash level one. Yeah. And Palu's just, he's ready to set him on fire. At least it's not Leaper losing sums um, right out of the gate. And we'll just be a flash from Andil. So it's still significant. But it isn't necessarily going to break the bank or give a massive lead like we saw for Envy at level one in game one. But still a huge edge. Yeah. Fate continuing his 100% win rate here in uh, the LCK for 2024. Absolutely amazing. POG worthy. Yep. Uh, also 100% win rate on Corky in 2024. Yeah. Um, there's some, some Atlas stats for you. We'll see if uh, Fate pushes the the envelope a little bit too far and has to flash just like game one as well this time around, or if he'll play, play a little bit more measured. Yeah, we might have to do a VOD check um, if we check out some of these uh, mid plays for too long, because it is looking pretty similar. Fate, of course, winning out on these trades, putting as much pressure on to Bulldog as he possibly can. Cannon being the priority there, which is why he unbinds the soul. And we can see here on the bottom side of the map, Envy and Polo continuing to do exactly the same thing, just raining down arrows as much as possible. So Andil being the one who lost his flash and the extra sustain he can bring as a Rakan is going to feel pretty good here compared to the Alistair level one. So as you can see here, the heals will help a little bit, but it's going to be a oh, no. huge wave crashing. Yep, Envy misses three CS in a row though, so I can't feel fantastic. No. Still, now they're kind of uh, fish in a barrel as Leaper and Andil will just take volley after volley. Still doing their very best to try and uh, pick up the farm, and they do manage to do so. In fact, Envy dropping a lot of CS. Yeah, actually, I mean, you could see it in the numbers. I mean, yeah, pushed a massive wave in and actually finds himself a whole wave down uh, on his opposition. So trying to put the pressure on a little bit too hard and put some of those autos into an Ezreal that's going to get healed by Rakan as Leaper and Ando are full health until now. Yep, Polo goes in. Presses the Eclipse button and is going to be absolutely fine. Level 3 feels pretty good to the Leona. And I say until now, but actually even after that, they're at full health. <laughs> yeah. Let's see whether Envy can uh, get his eye in a little bit as far as getting these last hits in line. Should be able to even itself out relatively well. Another missed one there. Oh, no. Oh, Another no. Another one there. Oh, dear. Okay, we're dropping a few per wave. Yeah. As Fate is going to get pushed out. Honestly, done there from Bulldog. Okay. Paul's goes back. Yeah. Oof. Okay. Okay. Getting quite a few Ooh, of them. that's a... Uh... I was just barely missed, actually. Yeah, I mean, that probably won't be too significant, but it might give Doiv a little bit of fear up here on the top side. Might think that Cuz is pathing directly up there, but he's not. And uh, I don't think Morgan is going to lose too much from potentially playing more respectfully as a result of it. Yep, and Morgan is just going to spend most of his time underneath the turret anyway. See the bros get their shove. And we'll now just try and find whatever vision they can. And holding these minions best as possible. Some coordinated skill shots flying towards Envy and not quite finding the mark. This time, you know, Fate TP's back. We didn't have that exchange where he lost his flash. And drafts are so somewhere we're just preparing oh. games as Envy. Yeah, in a little bit of trouble here. And this is what happens when Andal's the one that is the one to make the initial play. Yeah, very nicely done. And Envy continuing just to miss CS. Yeah, unfortunately, will also be denied this one. And I was just going to mention briefly that the mid lane is going way better this time around uh, for Bulldog. Yeah. Without really any other outside interaction from his jungler. Just, all right, let's kill some minions. <laughs> so let's hit the last part of it. And, um, and maybe that was what CV Max said is like, guys, I've got the strategy. Just play better. And, uh, and they're doing that. 
bottom lane working out way better. You can see mid lane, as you mentioned before, working out way better. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of, this is what you do when you run a draft back, is you just say like, all right, well, we still had a good draft, but if you just play better, it would work, because that's what I, that's why I drafted you that stuff. And, yeah. uh, you know, so far, according to plan, um, we're still a long ways away from knowing where, where this game is headed, but at least from the outset here, it's not a complete disaster early in the bottom lane like it was last time around. Yep. Envy with his Berserker's Greaves now. Moving on over. You can see, speaking of moving on over, Morgan is going to find Dudu here. Pushes him around a little bit. As the first dragon is going to be collected by the bros in response to the grubs that were picked up. As now Doiv, try and get back into his jungle, is going to be able to do so. As Andal and Leaper with some lane control, which they absolutely did not have in the last, uh, the last game. No, definitely not. Bulldog has the same. Brand is a lot more fragile than this Ira. Not in terms of like how much health and resistance he has, just because he just can't just put roots down and be like, all right, I'm walking away. He needs a little bit more setup to, to stun and, and peel for himself. Does have level six now, but that's also not an ult that's going to allow you to make a play bottom side with an Ash Arrow, for example. You can, of course, with a lot of setup, follow up on that CC, but a little bit tougher. So Doi, definitely not the same level of agency this time around. That's all right, Pollock going in. Leaper taking a fair bit of damage here is now Envy chasing after them. Frost shot slowing down the members of Quantum Freaks, but they are standing their ground now. And the arrow will fly out. Only level fives here for Andal and Leaper, unfortunately. And there's first blood in the 2v2 for Envy and Polo. You All don't right. need CS if you just kill champions, Wolf. Yep, just kill them. And Andal used his heal moments before to try to get them out of there, but the Ash Arrow is still going to connect. He's not the one who has a cleanse. He's not the one who's going to be able to get out of that one. Down he goes, down his flash as well now, and unfortunately, that means a follow-up play could be on the menu here for Bro. Again, a significant advantage bottom side, not quite the one from game one. Sandal's going straight mid. Yeah, let's see whether they can actually put some pressure onto Fate here as the grand entrance is kind of, he just missed the door, unfortunately. You know, sometimes you go for the entrance and you just like, the window looks a little bit like a door and you just face plant. Yeah, it's kind of like when a bird thinks the window's open. And yeah. Because it looks clear and it's super clean. Or if you go up to one of the department stores, right, and the sliding door is like, is just glass and it's all glass and you're like, is this where the automatic door is? And you just walk straight into the, yeah. Yeah. I like that. Except he, he just walked straight into nothing in this case. Yeah. It's yeah. like he wanted to splat the window but missed. Um, he, he just he actually just flew through it. He, he accidentally hit an open window and didn't hit it. <laughs> um, as yeah, Andil here does flash, but the auto's already out. Unfortunately, that was a, basically the fastest he could have flashed there, but Envy still gets the auto in. So really unfortunate flash usage, flash usage there, as uh, he would have died either way, but now doesn't have flash, so maybe the victim again. Uh, one of these plays is Envy's arrow is coming up right now, like three seconds away. He's going to have to play God. respectfully. Exactly. Flash cooldown is a long way out. So as you mentioned, Endel is going to be playing pretty far back. They're going to send this stacked wave uh, into them. Endel not going to be able to hold on to it. And that does mean that the bro is now with a little bit of time to move out Ooh. onto the map. Okay, probably will be seen. And Envy actually clearing out that control ward as well. They have so much vision here on this bottom side. As Morgan might just be solo killed. No, he's not. He's under a turret. It's, he's going to be... Okay. He might be duo killed. He might be ganked. Indeed. Does get that ward over. And that does mean that... Uh, because he's going to be spotted. We did see the Not a great news story. Yeah, we did see the turret gank in game one where he got ganked and they got the whole turret. It's still a ways away from that, but Dudu is working on plate advantages. Yep. Uh, this part of the game hasn't changed. Um, and that part of the bans against the NAR didn't change either, so here we are. Yeah, but, uh, moving on over, should be able to protect this uh, probe camp, does so. Polo moving up to the top lane as well, and this is the bro adaptation, right? I love this. They're actually just going to protect their top lane out of turret and show Morgan that he actually yeah. exists in the team. Exactly. You just put Envy mid, and then you've got a Cassante to just absorb the Ezreal bottom side there. And he should be fine at doing so. So this is a really smart call. Assuming Envy doesn't make any mistakes in the Bulldog here in the interim. And Palu, always a threat here if anyone's going to try to catch these rotating members. He's both a threat but also kind of a bodyguard here for this brand. And this means Andil is going to have to back away. Yeah. 
Envy also like activating the Q, walking up to Bulldog, getting a fair bit of damage down, and that should mean that these grubs will go over to Bro. They do them very, very quickly. Of course, this is a brand. He's pretty good at killing grubs, but Dudu has a Narbar at a decent position. Two grubs are picked up by Bro. As Envy moving on in, you can see Fate now fighting against Bulldog, who does go back to his soul there. And Dudu will hit Mega. Still not able to actually contest these grubs. So three apiece for both teams. I mean, the scary thing is, too, I mean, he could be, could have been vulnerable there to an Ash Arrow. Envy is holding that the entire time, a little bit concerned about a potential collapse, but as he was rotating back up to his turret, might have actually been able to force a flash out of him or something like that, but plays it very conservatively. Yep. It also means now Envy has the arrow if they decide to go aggressive on him in this top lane. That's why you can see he's able to still keep pushed up as Fate taking a bit of damage, and Plate is going to be secured here by Bulldog. Phosphorus bomb value, very, very nice there. Yeah. Hey, Bulldog still with a decent CS advantage, though, as Quantum Freaks look to start off their dragon. As Earth, Wind, and Fire could be the option. Could be. We Always will like it. We will have to wait and see. Could be Earth, Wind, and Electricity um, in a Hextech Soul, which would be massive for Quantum with this Ezreal. Doiv's coming down. They actually do not secure this dragon. They still have the area controlled at the moment, but with Fate pushing that mid wave in. A little bit wary about what could happen here with Envy also missing topside. Morgan's back up oh, there. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah, Bulldog possibly out of position. There's the flash forward. Of course there's the flash forward from Polo. And the unbound soul was his demise. You can see Bulldog there in the player cam looking a little frustrated as well. As the all out now onto Dudu. Morgan identifying that there is no Narbar there. The timing of this from Morgan is just so easy. He's like, all right, you're out of Narbar. Cannot Mega. I'm, I mean, it's it's done, and now I'm looking for my angle there. Spaces it perfectly, and now this is just going to be the Dragon. Oh, True Shot Barrage trying to go for a steal there as Leaper, but it's not going to be able to happen. And there is the Hextech, I believe, actually called by uh, our mate Yundo in the back room. I, he said, I literally said, or I also said it though. I was, I said, yeah, you Earth said it as well. But he also said, yeah, you yeah. said, the, yeah, the I thought you were sort of just I didn't rotating see he through his many. I didn't see he called it. But yeah, no, he did. He called it. I felt like it was definitely a hextech angle though, because there's an Ezreal here and it looks like this is going uh, yeah. to three and yeah, that's that. That is actually the Kwandong way back into the game. The problem is, is that it's going to need to coincide with some better play, and that hasn't quite started just yet. It might start now though, as Cuz. We're going to try and challenge the Pillar of Flame. So much damage, though. Quickness over the top of them. But where's the damage to follow up? As, oh my god, the journey that Polo just went on was gigantic. And Fate picks up the kill Morgan. under the Rakan. Morgan finding the angle. Cuz is executed. Leaper annihilated. And Bro are activated in round two. And they are just Kwangdom's kryptonite, Atlas. I mean, this is just insane. I mean, it's a 5-0 to zero kill score here. That's only a 1,000 gold to lead because of the hole in the Gnar lane, but it all starts off with this Bulldog. He's like, okay, it's safe if I hit the turret if I use my Unbound Soul, right? No, because then you go back to where it is and they kill you. Yeah, um, and, and they, had, here, they had the ward set up there earlier yeah, as well. No, I just, I, it, it's, it boggles the mind. This is an underperformance from Bulldog today. Two back-to-back -to -back games, Ione, and then over here, they're trying to cross map a little bit. Like, okay, they made the play bottom side. Ando comes over here, commits all the tools they then need defensively to get out of here. As Envy shows up, good flash from Cuz. The arrow is avoided, but the Morgan with a teleport flank here just locks them up. And Leaper makes the choice to maybe try to kill Envy. He's like, I'm so close. It's one auto away if he hits both of those. But he doesn't. Doiv's hype. Ector's hype. Sword's hype. They're and the Pro Leapers rise, Atlas. This is like the happiest I've seen Edgar all year. Actually, no, it's, it's the happiest we've seen Edgar since last time they faced off against Kwandong Freaks last season. Uh, this, I mean, they, they deserve a break, these guys, as it's just been a really rough start uh, for the bros. They can pick up this win, it would be so meaningful. Still, they have to keep it up, and it's 15 minutes. It's the danger zone, right? This is the time where the bros can turn off. Yeah. Right now, it's looking real good. No teleport from Morgan, of course, because of that play. So won't be able to join except by walking Bulldog faster on the track. They're going to try to come in and punish him. Yeah, Fate is actually just going to try and do as much damage as possible. Just moves straight over to that soul. Volley's flying in. Polo down to 50%. They're still wanting to stand up here as Doi 
Getting very low, but look at Fate. These rockets really start to hurt, but Dudu, he has the Mega. Wallop comes on down. The arrow is going to connect here onto Andil. That is going to be the Rift Herald secured as the Glacial Prison does not very much of anything at all. They're a little bit split, but Polo is also a little bit dead. Still, Cuz just trying to run away. Envy just following him with these frost shots. Gets distracted by Leaper as Andal with the quickness is not really doing much of anything. And there's the all out Andal. He keeps himself alive. Oh, Morgan! Not able to get in there and do it. The health bar is so low and they're just getting executed. Fate trying to do it, but he'll get taken down as well. Oh, bro. All just falling apart there in that play. What is it? 2021 spring? Are we flipping for hell? Oh, dear. Oh, dude. -doo. Okay, oh. he gives them one back. He gives them one back. He gives them oh, one back. Oh, true shot for Orange. Okay, it's fine. Oh, boy. That was a messy, messy fight. Everyone is insanely low. It's just a set of mechanical outplays on both sides, but Kwangdong Freak's definitely in pole position there for the fight. They end up with a Herald in the end, even though they end up trading one back here. Massive win for them. Game state here in terms of gold, still relatively even, almost dead even. In fact, unfortunately, the Ash Arrow, I feel like there was like three different opportunities of targets Envy could have gone for, and then eventually it was like, well, I gotta go for something. Unfortunately, it's the Rakan, so there's the whole up off. And then they engage onto Cuz, who's too tanky, and all the while, Leaper is just offering poke over this wall. And at the same time, Morgan is trying to be a hero man, and he almost gets on so oh. close. And he just autos him one more time. I know, and if anyone else was, uh, you know, there helping out, right? They're all doing their own thing, and they're all just barely not being able to get there. And this is what we were praising them for in game one, was that they were all on the same page. It didn't even matter whether it was a good play or a bad play. They were doing that play together. And that's what they need to keep doing, is another cannon's going to get missed. Yeah, another turret down here. Mid turret is down. That's going to push Quantum Freaks into a thousand gold the lead after all of that is a TP flank here from Dudu. Yeah, the Nabar are in a great position this time around as well as Envy is immediately going to cleanse. Flashes away from the Nar at the same time, but it means the Ash isn't in the team fight. The quickness is so incredibly powerful. Morgan, he gets a huge all out, but they've taken down the brand. Oh, goodness. Okay, Dudu, that is not where you want it to be. That is an angry Cassante, and he ain't getting Flame Horizon this time as Fate is chasing after Andil. Wants to be able to get this kill. Let's see whether he can actually... Uh, get in there, it is actually going to be Fate that collects it. And so Bro gonna win out on this fight. They might be able to transition into a Dragon as well as Morgan moving oh, towards the man. bottom lane is gonna go for the back. I can't wait to see the gold graph after this. All right, so Envy gets engaged on here, but he's, he's able to buy a ton of space for himself. The arrow is also fantastic, and the Dudu has to flash away in transformation, doesn't get the engage he was looking for, then has to try to use his Nard to peel, and then goes into Morgan over the wall. And Leaper, unfortunately, because Quantum pushed to the right side of the fight and tries to support Dudu's play, Leaper can't actually hit anybody. They're all kiting towards killing Andil and Dudu while also escaping Leaper's damage. Very uncoordinated again here, this time by Kwangdung. And we're back even in goal. Yep, it is even steep. Soul Point. Yep, Soul Point is actually coming on through here because he has won those and he is going to do so. Just presses the smite button as now Polo. He has the Eclipse, but he's still going to get cut down. Morgan finding Dudu, but he's looking for the rest of the team. And I think Morgan's just really dead. He's not even going to flash in this moment just realizing that he's just going to get chased down after that. So it is now Bro's turn to find the inopportune play. All right, show me that gold graph. I want to see it. It's going to be a... You want to check out the hot monitor? Yeah, I want to see it because it's going to be one of the craziest we've ever seen. This is constantly going to be about 1,500 gold. There we go. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Oh, boy. And oh, if we man. zoomed in a little bit and saw that, uh, you know, 7 to 11 minute mark. Look, look at, like, every single one earlier. Yeah, 7 to 11. Like, it's, it's it looks small because of the, the scale of the graph of the bro lead, but it was just, like, every 30 seconds there was a, there was a big uh, fight where it was one or the other. Anyways, in this case, it's a smite and steal here from Puzz. No secure. Morgan is too scared of pushing up to try to deny Cuz because it puts himself in a vulnerable spot. And then he just decides to, to give his life for the rest of his team getting out, and that's exactly what he's going to do. But I understand the concept behind setting this up the way they did. It was a little bit haphazard because if they do win that, not the fight, but the Dragon, Bro end up getting on soul point. They could dictate the rest of the pace of the game. The problem is that if you lose the fight, even if you get that, you're not guaranteed to get the fourth one because they have the side laning Nar. You still have a Cassante. Oh. As a vision toggle. Oh, this is very, very dangerous. Polo's going to be found. The arrow, it's going to come out. Doiv pops out of the brush. And Bulldog 
is aware of it. So they were going for a bit of a play there. Don't quite get it. It's okay, not end of the world. Not exactly committal CC or anything like that. Still not able to get the pick that they were looking for. 3,000 gold, the lead. For Kwandong Freaks, as that dust settles, moving towards 21 minutes into this game. Just look at the six and the nine of the kills and how reversible they are, and it just tells the whole story of this game. Yeah. <laughs> could be could be a nine on, on the Kwandong side and a six on Bro's side. and Flip them upside down, spin yeah. them around. It, it's just, <laughs> it doesn't actually matter. And uh, yeah. I mean, it's hard to even analyze a game like this because every time you think there's an edge, every time you think... After these one of these long fights, we jump out of a replay. You're like, where are we? It's another fight. It's another <laughs> throw. But, you know, if, if I'm going to be positive with you, Atlas, here again, even 2,000 gold down, there still is that same pick potential in this composition. There still is the functionality of the, the Cassante from behind. This time he's way less behind. In fact, he's ahead. He has four kills, a frozen heart in his inventory, and he's actually getting worked on this game. And Dudu showing up for fights a little bit more, but he hasn't been able to make the same impact. I do think there's definitely a world where Bro turn this game around. The gold difference is definitely against them here, but they still have strong Ash and uh, Leona engage potential. And Bulldog has definitely had some questionable moments in this game, just like he did in game one. And I'm not convinced Quantum have a lead. And the thing that I'm convinced about is the fact that the item spikes are starting to come in. There's the teleport. The oh, the setup from Morgan and Envy. That was gorgeous. And Fate is just gonna cash it in. Oh man, that was sick from the bros. Oh, that was so clean. That was the most complicated way I've seen to give a court <laughs> kill. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> and the history of the LCK, but look, Fate's on three kills. He's getting large again. And the the timing of the pullback, because Morgan has the frozen heart, he's got the, the, the gauntlet as well. He can kind of dictate as long as Dudu opts into the fight, because he's like, oh, I'm ranged. I win these. I've, I've, you know, I've got the hyper procs. If he continues to opt in, you can decide exactly when to pull into that Ash arrow. If you're watching on the minimap, Morgan has coordinated this with Envy. And there's that synergy. There's that communication we've kind of been saying hasn't always been there for most of these bro rosters. This one seems like it's a little bit different. Something special going on here. Fate goes in for the TP as well during the play to make sure they have enough damage. This is Morgan's comms in the moment. Yep. And Envy, I think, just pinged it out, said exactly where it was going to be, and special oh, delivery. Oh, oh. Thanks, Morgan. Oh, and he told him to eat the kill as well. well. He's like, get it. Mm. Giving it to you, Fate. He is selfless. Selfless leader, you know. The Lord himself. So they're going to be able to give that one over. And after having such an incredibly tough game one, I think it's pretty commendable that he's still... Having that great mindset, that is uh, the mindset of a winner. It's actually 600 gold behind still, actually. Yep. Thought he had a lead but it's in this not one with two, the kills. It's not 2.5k, which is, I think, uh, the position he was in in the last game. Very true. Uh, I think a lot of that gold still residual from the turrets and the plates um, that were picked up by Dudu, despite the kills looking so Morgan lopsided. It's very Lord-like behavior, though, I will say. Yep. From our top laner for Bro. He is a lordly man, you know. He didn't want the leadership role, but it came to him, and he had to accept it. It wasn't like he wasn't born into it you know, yeah. or anything like that. It's, it's not a feudal system here at the LCK. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's earned! <laughs> uh, Freaks taking a bit of poke. There's a flank angle from Dudu, who's making his way in teleport to bring Morgan into the fight. And now Fate sidestepping the True Shot Barrage, trying to keep these health bars as high as possible. And the Drake back up and available once again. Trying to avoid this poke as best they can. Ando on the flank too, spotting him is so huge. Yep, very important. And Bulldog's on that bottom side. They're just gonna run to Baron. Okay. That's a bro call. That's another thing you can do. I mean, they have a Drake advantage here. Morgan can slow down the rotation. They have a ton of damage here on this Quirky on Brand, but I don't know if they have the time still. You can see it's Morgan selling it. Yep. They get the control ward in, and Bro not actually going to do this. And in the meantime, the inner turret's going to go down, and the Drake's going to go down as well. Like, Bro, I don't know whether this was the call. This was not the way, and they are just going to move all together to try and defend their inner turret in the mid lane as well. This was an out rotation and just a bit of a disaster here for Bro. Yeah, I mean, the concept here is good because you have a Leona, you have a Fed Cassante who's kind of on that, that angle, and he's... He's trying to sell the idea, like, maybe we're in the brush or maybe we're doing, but I'm not actually standing in the brush. I'm standing on this edge, which leaves it very ambiguous, but they do close the gap and get that control ward. 
if you have the Leona and the Ash turn out of that brush and engage onto somebody instantly and get that turn, then it's a fantastic play. The problem is that you have to consider that there's a Yone pushing, there's also a Gnar doing the drag. Like you, you don't actually win those unless you really hard commit. Otherwise, if you if you just try to do a bluff, they're like, well, cool, minus two objectives for you. Yeah, and uh, Bro haven't taken any turrets yet, so. They really need to get onto this map and actually start making some things happen in these side lanes as Arrow is going to connect somehow onto Leaper. As Solar Flare is not. And so Bro not going to be able to find the pick necessarily. They do get the cleanse though out of uh, out of Leaper. This time they didn't get the cleanse and the flash and the E. And yeah, that's true. The root. So he, he does live in this case. They only read like the few, the, uh, the, a couple of the steps uh, that were required. They didn't go all the way down. But hey, now that he doesn't have the cleanse, maybe there's another opportunity, although that one's not quite on as long of a cooldown as the flash button is. I don't think this is a done deal. This is not a Kwangdong win. Yes, it's a 4,000 gold lead, and you know, depending on the analyst, you know, Chronicle says it's only a 4,000 gold lead. Usually I go, ooh, in this meta, 4,000 gold lead, it seems done so, but I don't think so in this case, just because of all the different engage opportunities that Bro have. I was discussing earlier, they don't have, like, it's not a game where Kwangdong Freaks have Massive map control, even though they've taken those turrets off the map, Bro could still compete here in mid lane. They have a shiv on this Ash, so she can clear this very fast, even though the inner is or outer is still up here in mid. Gotta be careful about this bulldog angle, though. Oh, yeah. Envy very, very close to just being dead. Uh, I think that if Andal had have fully invested, they could have just killed him. But he did have flash, he did have cleanse. But even just getting those uh, summoner spells, I think could would start be a barrier. Really, really good. Exactly right. Morgan, now with three items complete, that is so much armor that is being built by this Cassante. Killing him is going to be such a huge problem. It's just so difficult, you know, when the Gnar is not a, as ahead as he was in game one to rip through all this armor because of the damage profiles in this draft that we discussed last time around. Cause gonna clear some vision here. A lot of vision control here for Kwangdong, but they can't push it past the river. Now finally putting Ondo in a position for that. Another arrow going to come in here as Leaper is able to arcane shift away and it's not going to connect this time. I do like them going for the proactive place, but the problem is, is that Bro just, they're kind of together and not doing anything together, right? As waves are getting pushed in, side lanes are actually getting collected here by Kwandong Freaks, and this gold lead is just extending. The only champ they really had vision on to try to punish was the Ezreal, even though Cuz was nearby, they couldn't see him speaking of. Like, they can't set up engage if they can't see what to engage on, and this is just the Baron going down. Bro cannot close the gap anymore. They're going to try and move in. Quantum Freak staying on it for the moment. Cuz and Bulldog in the area. Their health bar is getting lower as there is the back to come through. I believe the teleport actually... No, no, no. Yes, it was the, it was the teleport from Fate. Fate. Yeah, moving him towards the top side. Dudu has immediately his. checked uh, Morgan, you know. Dudu has his, but doesn't have the Gnar anymore. But still, there's no way Bro can capitalize. And this means that Morgan has to go now be the Gnar Watcher and then hope to TP in if a fight breaks out down here. But to fight, they got to get close to the Sparrow Pit there. So far away, Asher yeah. is still not back. Well, Andal taking a little bit of damage here as they just try to lock down the Baron. There it goes. Not quite able to kill Doiv, but they do exactly what they need to do. Really well played by Kwandong Freaks. And they are just playing the map so much better than Bro. Bro just being ran around a little bit. And they, they couldn't do what they wanted to do last time, which was find these picks and turn them into skirmish skirmish wins. Yeah. Because Kwandong Freaks just aren't giving it to them. If, if we get, went back to the moment where they tried to arrow Leaper and he just arcane shifted away, I think that's the moment where Kwandong like, okay, it's done. We just start the Baron now. The arrow's gone. That's their longest range form of engage. They can't stop our turn. They're not able to deal with the side lane pressure. If eight TP's in, we keep pushing. They have to send Cassante, right? So it was in that moment where they're like, okay, arrow down, we go. They could have maybe looked for an arrow onto Cuz who was in the vicinity, but they didn't have vision. They couldn't find that angle. And I think at some point that Envy and Paulo just got frustrated. Like we got to fish for something. That's how we were able to get back into game one. And unfortunately this time they come up super empty and now the gold lead starts to feel insurmountable, and it's only going to get bigger from here. Yep. They also just have no one that wins in side lanes. And so being able to get to any of these turrets that you can see with these bounty gold surrounding them is just feeling next to impossible. And so Bro moving slowly but surely towards 10,000 gold lead, currently sitting at almost seven. That is a few more of these inner turrets are going to go down. The map is not only going to get a whole lot more dark for Bro, but also the money is just going to really become a massive issue. 
Bulldog getting very aggressive. Level 17 on both of the solo laners here. 16 only just being hit for Morgan. Very similar case for Fate as well. I mean, Dudu is not as ahead as he was last game, but he still is ranged into this Cassante, and he's got Baron-empowered minions, so Morgan just kind of has to sit here and help weather the storm, but they are pushing all three here, and now starting to put the pressure on this inhibitor turret mid, and there's no teleport flank angle here for Morgan. I mean, he's Cassante, even if he were to go for it, they could just turn on him, and he's got to deal with this Dudu push. He's got a Narbar now. So if he wants to TP, he's going to have to step back. Yep. He's going to move on back now. It is 44 seconds on this Baron. Powered Recall is going to be coming on through, and Fate taking a fair bit of damage there as he just kind of ignores it. Doesn't have too much lifesteal or anything like that, but he'll be fine. No one is here. And so Quantum Freaks, they just move back. They take themselves Soul Point Triple Hextech. Yeah, imagine the attack speed and ability haste that this Ezreal is going to be sitting on. Oh, yeah. As well as if he gets that fourth one, if we get to that point in this game, all of that plus extra slows that are going to be hitting every single time he Mystic Shots anyone on the stacked up members of Bro. It was so good for Bro in the early game. They had the two Drake lead. They were proactive, proactive, excuse me. And they, they had nice advantages, but they took a few wish-washy fights. Palu and the squad hard committed on that Herald top side, and that's when the dominoes started to fall. And when Quantum Freaks feel too big to fail after that Baron, they're 8,000 gold ahead right now. And there's just, there's too many ways for Quantum Freaks to engage in with this kind of a lead because they have the NAR to force Bro to be in the wrong side of the map, or they have this lopsided rotation where Morgan and Fade are trading places. Look at this. I mean, yeah. Oh, you're so close to the setup of the chain CC, but. And Andal just able to, to walk in and face check because he can always battle dance or grand entrance or anything like that to get himself out of the way. That happening right there. Not going to be a pick target here that Bro can really look out for. Trishop Barrage is going to spot both of the duo of Doiv and Polo that were just looking for some sort of angle. Doesn't really work out here as Dudu. Not a lot of Narbar, but does have a lot of pushing power. Yeah. Leaper's got so much poke. If and he hits it. Sure. But I mean, even the threat of it makes them walk back and that allows these minions to stack up. I mean, Bro can't leave their base. Yeah. They are locked in. Yeah, it's a siege. Uh, Quite literally here, and we're just waiting for the, the next objectives to come up. Quang Freaks Freaks are saying, come at me. Yep. Glacier Prison going to go wide. Uh, as Kaz looking for an opportunity there. Envy spots him. If you can get all the minion waves stacked onto all of these turrets, you start to whittle away at them, but it also means you have permanently a dark rift. I'd love to see a vision toggle of, like, you can't see anything as Bro here on the map, except that one ward they have to the left. And so you can't engage on anybody. You don't know where anyone's standing. You have no targets, and you're just behind your turret waiting for, for the end of the game because there is no angle. And unfortunately, a flanking Corky without a package is never going to be the way. A flanking Cassante on a teleport ward that's that far away is just yeah. not going to be an opportunity either. And it's looking a little bit rough. And, bro, I just... it. it. I want to say that, like, this is the angle, this is the angle, but they've just, ever since they got so hor horrifically outplayed and outmaneuvered, they have continued to look blindfolded. Yeah, I mean, in, in terms of the vision when they held all those stacks, even here, the, they quite literally were. Yeah. But now, I mean, they're, they're in the mid lane, but there's no engaged target here. Leaper's level 18. He's got flash and cleanse and E, and we've already explained that. <laughs> it's going to be hard to take those away on succession this time. And four items are now completed for fate. Maybe that's uh, maybe that's the positivity, the brositivity, brositivity sorry, that, we, um, that we that we need to be focusing on. It's dried up a little bit, Atlas. It is it is very difficult to activate at this point in time. But five seconds until the Baron is up. Maybe that is going to be the window. Maybe that's the angle. As that's not, uh, if you're talking about brositivity, that's a lot of damage from Leaper's True Shot Barrage. And now, Bro, they're just going to start it up. Bulldog is in the top lane, winning the game. And Bro are just doing Baron. Okay, Quickness is going to fly in from Andal as well. That is a whole lot of work that he's getting done here as Polo is just trying to play Bouncer as best he can. He's Fate is fighting against Leaper and losing. And they are all dying one after the other. He might be able to get Leaper, but that is going to be it. That is the ace. And Quandong Freaks can just go back 
to what Bulldog was doing earlier and look to return the favor here to the bros and bring us to game three. It's game three, the series we expected. Going the distance, Envy in that fight, hitting a very, very tanky Sejuani, not able to put the damage into the carries. Double teleport turns a 5v3 to a 5v5. The wallets, they were heavy. Bono Freaks with some better map reads here. And they're gonna bring us to that third and final game. There goes the Nexus. One on Freaks answering back in this series. It's not gonna be a repeat of the spring season. And if they win again, could be a repeat of round robin one. See whether the bros can get themselves back on the right foot. Maybe it's a side selection change that's going to help them out. But uh, that was definitely not uh, the bros that we saw in game number one. This was the bro performance that we've seen in many other games this season. Yeah, definitely a good start and then rough middle. And uh, as League of Legends goes, the ending is not what you're looking for. Maybe, I mean, the biggest win for us as casters is we get a third game, but we also might get a different draft coming into this last one because we kind of ran it back with two exceptions this time around, and the result was actually not similar because of the way the mid game went and some of those throws that happened on the map. But I think Kwangdong tightened up some of their play, fewer mistakes, respecting the Ash Leona a lot more in the second game. Leaper did the boom boom, which means he might be front runner for POG. I know there's some positional mistakes in this one, but it was really just the the side laners who won the game while Bro was trying to figure out what to do. Yeah, and. Huge shout outs to uh, Bulldog and Cuz for actually getting it together a whole lot more in this game. I think Bulldog especially really stepping up, finding a lot more angles, but also just knowing when he should be split push pushing, knowing when he can start really extending these advantages that he's picked up for themselves. Quantum Freak's looking way better in game number two. It's now time for us to take a short break. When we get back, Space gonna break it down. We'll see you for game three. And that was the big issue there for Bro. Yep. We do have to remember that half the series that Bro played in round robin one, they did manage to pick up a game, right? And yeah. that's that's sort of rounding up a little bit, you know, four out of nine. Nearly half. Uh, so definitely, like, they have been in positions like this before. They, they're starting to get used to it. And we'll see whether that is going to be able to give them the All edge right. in well, the series. There's no Corky this time. No, oh, and uh, Bro did choose blue side. Yeah. So we are swapping sides finally this series. So we're going to see a very different draft, I think, as the Rumble will be banned here. We'll see if that Tristana gets a look here. Ezreal also taken away from Leaper. I actually really like this because what Bro are doing is they're utilizing the power of blue side very, very well. And I think getting rid of the Ezreal for Leaper is fantastic. And what you're doing 
to Kwanong Freaks is forcing them to ban the must bans. And yep. that means that a few of these these picks are just not going to get... And that's a Yone first pick? Yeah, I don't know if um, Kwanong are too worried about it. But I think even though Bro was on the other side, it would be super giga Chad to just see a Talia rotation here. It's fallen off so massively, but... I mean, you can't really play it in the jungle anymore. That's the problem. Yeah, but I still think it's very strong with a Viego that Cuz is very good at. If we just go Sejuani Oh, right. Nar yeah, here. if you're just going to do it on the, the Kwanong side, yeah. If we go, yeah, if we go Sejuani Nar, then I'm a little bit less enthusiastic about it. But I have a feeling. I mean, that's when, where we're going. when you can just trust Bro to pick Cassante into it, I mean, I love it. Yeah. Normally, I hate blind Nah. I just don't think it's good because there are so many things that you can you can pick to make its life really really difficult. Um, one thing comes to mind, you know, you could you could just do the classic keen and just pick rise into it. You or know? the uh, okay, wait, oh, we're halfway oh. there. We're halfway there, Atlas. The Cuz Viego, okay. and I think that like it's it's free. If they want to pick Talia, they can just pick it. Yeah. And you know, it's very good in Dione. Now, this does mean they're going to give over the Sejuani, but I still prefer going something else here, doing a different style from Kwangdong than just trying to have this uh, Yone with Sejuani with a Gnar running around. Yep. And the final pick here, going to be an AD the carry. Zeri that goes through. It's the Zeri that's left up. It's been Envy's best pick, frankly. And, you know, I feel like that's been true for a long time. Yeah. He's played some good Lucian games. He's had a good Varus here or there. The Ash doesn't have a Sejuani with it. We'll probably not have a Le Leona with it this time around. I think Braum Leona bands feel pretty simple here for Bro in second phase, but it's still a strong level one. And there are yeah. a lot of other supports that can be threatening here as well. And I think that Leaper is going to be very happy that he's now the one that gets to throw arrows relentlessly into the opposition because he had a bit of a rough time dealing with that, especially in game number one. Cannon going to be taken away, of course. Morgan, bit of a fan oh. of the Cannon matchup. Now, and there is the Braum, like you were talking about. Ban Leona next. And we've we've figured it out. What does that mean for what the pick is going to be out of Andal? And will it even come in yet? I actually kind of feel like it, it's just going to be Talia that comes through. It maybe a Talia ban would be a good idea. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. They could do that. You know, Bulldog is not known to play the Ari, for example. Um, he could just end up playing Azir if that's going to be the case, which is fine and still strong. But is it's it not one be... of his traditional picks. Oh, God. What if they do the Viego Huey? Oh, so it's the freest Leona pick of all time. Maybe they're just trying to convince them that they want to pick Leona instead of uh, picking something else. And then they've got a plan to go into it. I don't know. I don't it's... know what their plan is necessarily. It's... Leona's just pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty strong level one. Very strong with the Ash Arrow, as we've already seen twice. Oh, As, oh no, just going to pick Oriana instead. No, it's got to be Leona. Don't troll okay. me like that, Leaper. It's OK. It's that okay. was a streamer moment right there. <laughs> and this the, is a professional game. <laughs> the thing as well is that this is the Quantum Freaks. So they could have just done it. You know, it could have just been a crazy pick. Right. Um, OK, we're going to we're going to consider our options. Looks like Polo is uh, thinking about the, the rel and it is going to be locked in. Okay, and so now, where is Morgan going? I mean, would he? Be, would he be bold enough for oh, GP? I was thinking it was going to be Camille, but instead it's going to be the Jax, the other flavor of split push top laner. So and I actually like this. They went from having zero side lane pressure at all to a 1 3 1 comp. So it's the other self counter pick. Now, old Kwangdong freaks go, what up? It's a weird pick like uh, a scaling mid. You know, it's going to be Aurelian Soul. I'm going to play Cassidy. No! It's modern Quantum Freaks. It's Viego Talia. Lock that in, Bulldog. That's yeah. right. <laughs> it wasn't a secret. It wasn't CU Max. Like, I have this secret. You do this all the time. This is quite strong. This is a robust comp. This is the best comp we've seen from Quantum all series. And once again, Morgan just opted into a tough matchup here. Now, I do see what you're saying. Great synergy in both mid and top for the Sejuani with the Jax. Insanely strong split pushing, could buy a lot of time for Zeri to scale up. You've got really good follow-up with the Shax when the Magnet Storm comes through, the Yone Oak comes through, but it's the losing lane that in isolation should happen. We've seen Keen, you know, turn that on its head a little bit, but besides Keen, we're not really seeing the, the Jax get synergy there. Cuz, Bulldog, I said it before, I, I was gonna push back on the desk, where like the, the mid jungle synergy isn't there. With this combo, it is. And you have the Ash Leona bottom lane. You've got tons of follow-up engage. 
This is the real draft gap. This is the CB Max I want to see. This is the drafting that Guangdong had in the first few weeks of the season that gave us the belief that maybe this could be a top four team and not a team that's going to slide down in round two. And at least at the end of this series, they pull it together. There were some draft mistakes, I will also say, I think, on the side of Bro here, but the Bro yeah. leavers won't give up. I was going to say, um, I, I, I think that Bro kind of walked into this uh, with, with zero hesitation. And they saw everything uh, and then just said, okay, you can do that. And uh, and banned Alistair again. I don't know. I'm a bit bothered by what Bro did here. However, maybe their play is going to change it up. And honestly, do you know how much the draft has mattered? About zero this series. <laughs> Let's get under the rift. All right, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. It is time, the deciding moment of the first match of round two. Bro, can they get their first match win? That is the question on everyone's minds here. You know, game one kind of tricked me. I uh -huh. thought the draft mattered a little bit. I was like, man, that Nar in the matchup <laughs> got a huge lead. But Ash also level one into the Alistair. That was a huge advantage. You know, the, the synergy with the, the CC setup. Nope. In game two, we we were brought back to reality and that the better play, the better map reads, that's actually what wins these games. But I look at this draft and I go, if Quando play the map as they did in game two, with this draft, their control of vision with Ash, oh. Weaver's Wall, it's kind of insane as we're fishing. Yeah, he got the gold. We've done it. Morgan is, uh, he's already ahead. Bro already with a massive, uh, massive lead here before anything has even happened. Morgan just going to walk onto a ward. It's a Fisher tribute yep. after Kalix got subbed in. And this is an interesting matchup, uh, the Nah into the Jacks, because there are a couple of schools of thought. And of course, there are some people that think that the Jacks just hard wins the matchup, and there are just ways to play it that are just better. And if you play around Mega Nah and things like that, it can work. And of course, later on in the game, you are going to win in the side lane. But I think that in practice, that's not how it's worked. I think on the east side, Nar just wins. Yeah, that's kind of the way. But on the west side, you know, there are some there are some ways to pull it off. Uh, Morgan's only played this once this season. I can't believe this is the first time that Fates played Unit. As all right, we're flashing in. We're finding the stun, and once again, it doesn't matter. I guess what they're playing, it's it's always just going to be an all-in level one. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Um, it's you know, a little, little level two advantage. I guess. Action. Uh, uh, and Zeri is on a losing streak. Notice uh, some of the big names in there. Aiming, Guma. Yeah. Aiming, of course, is our resident uh, Zeri player as well. So it's, it's not necessarily a, it's only the east side teams playing this. It's uh, just the Zeri hasn't really found as much success. If, uh, you know, Viper hadn't played that Ezreal as well as he did in that loss for Guma, it might have been a little bit less on the lost streak there, but... You know, it is what it is. Like, it's not always about Zeri being bad. Sometimes it's just about the loss you had, but still. Uh, level two hit, trade that of flashes. Like, that sounded like song lyrics, Wolf. I actually, I was I was really kind of into that. Well, you know, I'd listen inspire to some it. teenagers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd, uh, I'd listen to it. It's okay. There's the knock up onto Polu. Polu. Polu making his way in. It's a decent seismic shove. That's going to push him back. It's now Doiv in this top lane has found Cuz, gonna slow him up a little bit. Not gonna be able to find this dive though, as Cuz is positioning once again pretty good. They're gonna get that rotation from Bulldog as well. He like leaves the gank that Polo goes for and immediately moves up to support top lane, actually kind of performing double duty there. Nicely done. It's really interesting that the Jax pick specifically was a, it was or rather the Nar pick was kind of a specific Jax counter when we had that really long Jax meta. Um, and you would just, if you pick the Jax, you ban the Nar 100%. You just never let this go through. And Dudu has just ended up with three games of Nar into a favorable matchup for him, as you can see here. Like, the, the Jax was keeping it even until now. Yep, well, we've seen this play before, but it was on the other side. It's going to get a flash this time, though, as Cuz is also going to be able to take the Rift Scuttler. As you can see, Leaper is going to get a lot of pressure on him, but not going to be dying just yet as Dudu will hit the Megan as he uh, throws this minion wave towards the turret. Morgan just going for a bit of a walk back, so not actually utilizing his teleport to get back up there. That's going to be a decent amount of power. Yeah, that's definitely huge for him. If uh, 
and get back in time to prevent any minions from being lost, and it looks like that's likely to be the case. And in mid, you know, we, we've seen no games of fate this season. It said it was first Yone put pick. Um, you know, it's those are seasonal stats, but, uh, you know, he's not known for his Yone, of course, uh, on his time as Sandbox. Yeah, it feels to me like it would fit into the into the fate play style. Um, but maybe that's more of a vibes thing rather than any like actual based on statistical analysis or anything like that. I did the check earlier for Yahoo, and I'll uh, I'm pulling it up for you again here this time around. You can do a bit of a check. Yeah, because it does feel like it could be his first game ever, but I'm not I'm not saying it until I look it up. I feel like it isn't, but uh, I'm just I'm not I don't know I just don't know. As uh, all right, envy. And Polo throwing some abilities towards the Quantum Freak's bottom lane. Really he has two games of Yone. It's his third. He's a 0% win rate, though. 0-2. Well, let's see whether we can turn that one around here, as right now it's not looking too positive in these trades. But if you have a look at the numbers, it's uh, still a whole lot of farm that he has managed to pick up for himself. So really nicely done utilizing that health bar as a resource. Yeah, we've seen a lot of Yone's in matchups like this into the Talia, into the Azir, where... You don't usually get a huge lane lead in terms of health trades and stuff like that, but you are able to maintain a CS parity at worst case. Um, you know, players like BD have done that really well, even to the Tristana, the Corky, as uh, not the dash he was looking for there, but... Yeah, dashing over the rocks just to show that he doesn't care. He's just caster curse. I'm like, yeah, you know, he's doing all right. Um, still, he's still all right. He's still fine. Uh, we have positivity on both sides here. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, It'll be fate-sided this time, as uh, we're just going to trade objectives now. Jack's getting grubs, very important for that side lane in the later parts of the game. So this is going to be very nice for Bro. In return, it will be the Mountain Drake that goes over to Quantum Freaks, which is in itself quite significant too. But if the Jax does end up with five grubs and has some time in a side lane, same with the Yone, can of course clear turrets very quickly if given some additional time. Yep. It does feel like that could be the more valuable setup here. As Fate's coming up here, oh. looking to punish the Gnar. Yeah, this is dangerous, Doiv with his uh, Frost Armor, is actually pretty capable of tanking up these turrets. Morgan has to get through these minions, though. And now Doif, yeah, he's just going to flash on in. Dudu, now with Meganov, is going to come on through, but the fate is going to be sealed. And in fact, fate is also going to pick up the kill. Really nicely done. It's a heavy and cost, though, in the mid lane as well, as Bulldog is going to be able to push that wave in and grab a plate. But I think this is still worth here for Bro. Especially considering Morgan also grabs a plate top side. Yeah, Morgan should probably be the one to teleport mid, maybe. As uh, never mind, not going to back away fast enough. And that's going to mean that he is going to head back towards top lane, and Fate is going to be able to just collect what's left of that wave. In. Yeah, still ends up being even in CS, even though he left the lane, and will obviously have that extra go uh, first blood gold on top of that. Yeah, and the timing of that dive had to be very quick like they had to actually get in there before Dudu had his gnar set because he was so close to it and if he had been able to just comfortably gnar under turret there then it would not have worked out but that's i think why they sent up three people they ended up committing fate here as well because just two wasn't going to alone be enough as morgan flashes for the counter strike here as doiv also commits his just to make sure they lock up that cc to guarantee that fate can hit his ult and seal his fate as Arrow going to connect here, they find Polo, and he was in the dark, and he's just going to be taken out here, crashes into the wall, Cuz is going to hop on the steed, or wear the pants, and that is a really nice pick, and Leaper just showing that he can do exactly what Bro were doing the last two games. Yeah, just such great setup here with this Ash Arrow, and even the Viego get on the action, Cuz commits his Heartbreaker just to make sure they get the kill. And sometimes when you give a kill over to the jungle, you don't feel too great about it. When you give the kill over to Cuz's Viego, it's always a happy ending. Oh, yeah. that's uh, That one feels real good. Just to correct myself, there was a ward in that brush. So it was Polo just kind of uh, caught napping and standing on vision that Quantum Freaks had. Great capitalization, yeah. though. He's been so proactive this game that, you know, there's a lot of ways you can try to punish this. If you have a ward here, though, it's just as simple as shoot arrow towards stationary target. Yep. Doesn't have a lot of time to react there. Unfortunately, does get taken out. And uh, Envy not actually able to punish or anything like that with a uh, arrow on cooldown because, of course, he is a Zeri. Level 6 has been a spike in the past, um, but 
doesn't really have too much of a map state to be able to do it. Yeah, he's, you know, fortunately 10 CS down, just kind of locked under turret. So has been relatively uh, unlocked, hasn't been able to go in for any of those all-ins, kind of what you were saying there. And it's been a quiet early game outside of that one proactive play top side and then a punish by Kwangdong Freaks. Trade of objectives is going to get a little bit more interesting here when we go to second grubs because that's where Quantum Freaks, with the timing of this, should be able to contest and try to deny that magic grub spike as Sundered Sky is picked up with that additional gold for Cuz. Ooh, Fade able to walk out of the seismic shove there as well. Looking a little bit dangerous. As you're right, it's going to be grubs that's going to be the focus. 30 seconds on the clock before they come up. A minute and a half until Chemtech Drake going to be up on the rift. See what soul we're going to get this time as Bro might be able to even out the uh, sorry, might be able to reach that six grub stack if they're able to get control of this as Morgan. There are a lot of bad guys in the area. Just a leap strike. That's what it's gonna cost him. And he doesn't even lose any health. Not sure if I Andul is happy or not that that didn't land. I think probably pretty happy considering the rotation up here and that turret. As he does not connect with it, but Solar Flare on cooldown here. Yeah. Weaver's Wall also available for Bulldog, but the angle is a little bit tricky, actually. They just don't have a great entry point. And Envy's rotating in, going to meet Leaper in the mid lane right now. They can see Cuz clearing out this control ward. His first grub is going to be taken down. There's the knockup onto Andal. Permafrost comes in as well, but they're investing the teleport, and they only get half the health bar of the Leona. As the teleport is actually going to get cancelled as Dudu going down low. Cuz sneaks in and steals away one of the grubs, but now Andal's in a bit of trouble. Extendo Beam comes through, Polu finds the angle with the Magnus Storm, and now Envy is starting to get online. Cuz trying to do what he can as he transforms into the dead Rel, but now Fate is fighting Leaper, and he'll take him down. Bulldog is gonna punish him, but it's still a bro win in the team fight. And it's a bro win on five grubs for the Jax, which is what this was all about. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my stamp on it here because this was such a fantastic engage from Paulu that sets Envy up for success. Cuz transforms after getting that kill or rather getting the reset there, but it's ultimately not really going to change the story here. As you can see, position-wise, for the side of Bro here, Ando goes in, but he's way too far away from the rest of his team. Can't heal for Paul, who's engaged, and he's just going to be free food here for Envy because he gets the transformation, but unfortunately, there is just no way out. Bro, very happy with this exchange because it also means Voidling's for the Jacks in a side lane yeah. later on when the Zeri is already this scaled, this farmed up. This is a huge win, I think, more than the gold lead that swings into their favor really shows. Also, Cull about to be cashed in for the Zeri at the same time, so that's a very, very powerful Envy on his next back, even though he did just go back to base. And you can see that bounce up, I think. Yep, 1,000 as the Cull is cashed through. So, Doiv. Thinking about a doy, perhaps. And you know what? It, I don't know about the Jax and Nar matchup. I'm not going to necessarily make judgment on that, but if you just keep diving the Nar, it's pretty good for the Jax. I think so, too. <laughs> I think that's going to start getting him ahead. And also, another thing that's good is Cloud Soul. Um, it's, you know, it's a bit of a non sequitur. I just wanted to say it. That's Very good for Zeri. It is certainly, and also good for if you're not as uh, comfortable rotating, and that is something that Bro have certainly been, as Glacial Prison is going to come down. Great Magnus on there as well, as they just layer the CC through. The Nar is dead, and now Andal. Oh, I don't know whether that was the safe direction to go. He didn't have too many options here, and I think he is just dead. Shattering Strike comes on through, and MB gets another one. I mean, this is a disaster for Pongdong Freaks. They're matching the rotations, but so late that not only are they not saving their Nar or the turret, but they're giving over kills a second time here. Additional kills going over. Five assists for this Jax, a full turret's worth of gold. A lot of that going to the Zeri, by the way, oh, sitting on 7k. 7,000 gold at 13 minutes 50 as the plates fall. And if you have your Talia in position, the Weaver's wall over, maybe you can make a play here. Doesn't have teleport. And why are we rotating up here? You're outnumbered. And uh, this is just a disaster, and it's like Kwangdong Freaks were like, well, guess what? We have the counter matchup again for the top lane, so we don't have to spend any resources there. And Bro just turned that narrative on its head. This time they play through Morgan, and he is getting massive advantages from it. The Zeri, though, the bigger win biggest winner of this. Yeah, and the fact that it's Doiv with only one of the kills in this situation, and Morgan still sitting on 0-0-5. 
on this Jax, really getting amongst it. The most uh, involved he's been in an early game in what feels like forever is now Dudu. Oh, Permafrost starting to get stacked up. Yeah, it's, he's just dead again. Probably going to come on over. And these are the two, like, utility champions that just take out this mini knock. Yeah. And unfortunately for Dudu, it was like uh, Vengeance is there for the side of Bro and specifically for the side of Morgan in this game. He is going to feel very cathartic about what is happening in this early game. Fate's going to take out a second turret here for the side of OK Savings Bank and Quantum Freaks. We'll be able to match that on top side here for Bulldog, who is actually on his own generating a lot of gold here. But he just isn't making the impact on his own with Weaver's Wall. He's always on the opposite side of the map of the action, and that's what Bro have been playing around. If you're playing through trying to catch the Talia, she just walls away. She's very difficult to lock down. She's got some decent heal. Nar is, as well with his Nar bar, with his hop. He can get out of a lot of sticky situations, but even if he gets out there, you get the turret worst case scenario, but for the third time, they kill him and get even more value. It's the first time got plates, second time a whole turret, second time an additional turret. And Dudu has je definitely been pushed out of this one. He really has. And the fact that Morgan is ahead in farm by about 20 CS, but also like he'll just have way more money. The threat in a side lane is going to be huge. And the way Bro are actually playing around side lanes exists. Yeah. And that is way more than what it did in uh, in game number two, where they weren't quite able to identify where turrets were. It felt like they couldn't really get any side lane farm because they felt like no one was actually safe enough to go over there and collect it unless it's underneath the turret. And that just meant the Quantum Freaks had run to the map. This time around, though, they are putting on the pressure and they are making the plays. And, and it's great to see. Bulldog indexed heavily into that arm guard, which the stats of of it alone will be relatively useful into the Ione, but if he's not going to team fight with his squad, I don't know how much the stasis is going to be valuable. They might catch Fate. No nope. oh, walk. He is going to ult away though, so that means that it puts the Fate sealed on cooldown. It uh, se seals Fate's ability to use his ultimate, as it as it were. Wolf. Yeah, he likes the pun champions, huh? Yeah, definitely. Is Arrow going to connect here? Weaver's Wall going to scale on through, but Envy he gets over. And the seismic shove, yeah, that's not walk, that's run, because there's a cloud soul. I mean, look at this flank here for Morgan. They really need to respect this, though, and they're not in position with Pryo. This Herald will change that narrative very quick, though, and yeah. the bro are going to have to go and defend this or give up Dragon Pryo. Well, Tudu, they're just going to dive on top of him. Doif not actually going to connect the ulti, but it doesn't matter. Magnus Storm from Polo is gorgeous, and now Envy dives in. I don't even know whether he really wants to, but Bulldog, he's going to break that arm guard, and he's just going to find a permafrost waiting for him. There's the double as the lightning is going to strike. And Bro, they turn, getting heralded in the mid lane to taking a mid lane turret and fate. Wants even more. God, Handel. I don't know about that one. Careful, that my man. blade was not what he wanted I to do. Careful. <laughs> you end up on the wrong side of that fight, and you'll be an extra kill, a fourth to go over to Bro. Five kills for Envy, and Morgan's on this flank, and yeah, you get the Herald charge, but Bro have kind of, this is like so the anti-Bro moment, because instead of just panicking and, and walking back and forth and doing nothing, they make a snap call with the flank that Morgan has to collapse on to Quantum Freaks, and there's that arm guard. Not a whole lot of value, unfortunately, here for Bulldog, as they will win the fight, and Envy just crushes it. Static oh. Shift Procs here and his ultimate, ripping through the numbers of Quantum Freaks, and it's a 5,000 gold lead here at 18 minutes. Zeri is insanely ahead, has a Runins and a BF Sword picked up here off of these back-to-back -back team fight wins. I'm ready to say, I think it might be the first win for Bro this season. It is looking like they've pretty much done it. I mean, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but I agree that they are in a very winnable scenario It's right tough now. to toss this one out. I, I think it should be, but I am very worried by the amount of Brozativity, because I don't want to Brinks it, you know? It's, I, I'm just adding PR to everything, and it's, it's probably not the way to do it. It's, okay, this is going to be their first dragon of the game. So blue side tends to get dragon number three in uh, the context of this best of three. Yes, that has definitely been the case. Stacking up the Cloud Drakes, and if they manage to get to a whole bunch of those, then these side laners in the Yoni and the Jacks are going to be yeah. Very difficult to lock down. Five grubs, you know? I mean, it's, yeah. it's all coming up bro right now. Arm guard's broken for Bulldog. Oh, Doiv. Maybe a fifth. Gonna get spotted. That's uh, all right. Seismic shove. Just gonna get eaten there by Fate. He does take a turret shot. 
Does do a fair bit of damage to him there as well, but Quantum Freaks not going to lose anyone as the rest of Bro are rotating over. I like this, though. They are keeping up the pressure. They are keeping up the tempo. Yeah. Now, no one's in top lane. There was a ping there. Looks like it's going to be Fate who goes up there to try to push that one out. As there's no objective here on the bottom side of the map for Guangdong Freaks, Baron has spawned, but it's an Ash on Kraken Slayer and really just a one item Talia here with no Leandries. There's no way Guangdong Freaks could try to rush over and do that, so they're just going to have to sit back and deal with Bro's side lane pressure as Envy rips through these waves too so quickly. He already had the shiv. It was skipped by Leaper, so he has no wave clear answer. As you can see, these waves just, you know, barreling down the mid lane. Yeah. Where he's catching it on inner. And they're gonna get the scuttle here. So full map control right now for OK Savings Bank Freon. And again, I'm I'm being a optimist, but yeah, this is looking real good at the moment. Yeah, I think it's appropriate. Don't you worry. As they're now considering some sort of answer. Quantum Freaks managed to get some vision on this Baron, trying to just like figure it out, get themselves into a position where they can start to fight back. Side lanes, though, so hard to play through into Jax Yone. And every time Bro walk into the river, they can do it with full confidence, right? This Zeri does so much damage at this stage that it's not even unrealistic. I, again, you have to be very careful about how you do this, but if you're Guangdong Freaks, you need to be constantly tossing vision in there. You need to actually be aware, because if you leave this for just too long, I mean, Envy will actually kill that. And because he has mid bio constantly here with a Static Shiv, they just don't know, and they have to spend so much time grouping. That means the Jax becomes a bigger issue. It means if you if you leave the Yone in the top, he's going to be a bigger issue. You start dropping waves on the map, and then the gold lead just kind of grows slowly, and it gets bigger and bigger. And now Envy, I think, has IE, because he's going for a back, and there, there it is. is. So that's three. I, I mean, Infinity Edge done at 21 minutes is absurd. Uh, having three items this early on. I mean, Leaper was just really proud of himself for finishing his, uh, his Phantom Dancer. And it is full IE on top of that for Envy. This is a well-certified Zeri. That's a great buffer of the ultimate there from Fate. Absolutely worth. And Seismic Shove going to go wide. Bro looking for an angle. I mean, they want any excuse to fight. They are so much stronger. And the fact that Envy just hits this spike, like, they're not going to find, a, like, a gap in strength oh. until they, in, like, Unless they win a huge fight, right? And yeah, then it's just like, that's that's the result of this anyway. So if the Narbar is down too, it's so hard to fight as Kwangdong, and you're so far behind that the pick-based idea doesn't work very well. And yeah, Envy's not as mobile as an Ezreal is into the uh, Ash and the Leona combo we were talking about in games one and two, but he's still fairly mobile. He can get over walls, can do a lot of stuff to get away from that, has his cleanse. And if we see a Palu engage of any kind that hits more than two people, I mean, honestly, if it's two or more, Zeri ults and they win the fight. So you, as Kwangdong approaching this, have to be so cautious. And yeah, Kuz got gold early, but he hasn't really been able to t turn that into anything. Oh, Doif gets out of the way, seismic shove. Kwangdong Freak still preventing a Baron from just being taken here. But that's not what Bro wants. They want to find a fight, and here it is! The Magnus Storm comes in, Kuz! Nowhere to go, no options. It's another kill that's for Envy, and that's the perfect target, right? Yep, that's the jungler down, had flash and ult, but just isn't able to get out of there. And somebody's got to check, but they just have no vision, and there's just too many threats. And this is done with Ione pushing the side as well. He had a wraparound angle too. Quantum Freaks were just so cut off from the rest of the map. And then, yeah, you push the Jax out of the bottom lane, but he doesn't care. He doesn't even need it for this Baron. Yeah, Teleport went to mid lane so they could set up that second wave here. And bro, playing the map well, playing the early game well. I'd say they're even mapping the plays well. They're just kind of, they're kind of getting it all right. Yeah, and this is such a good draft from Kwangdong and it's their style of draft. Well, they just fell so far behind, they can't use any of the pieces. And frankly, I don't think they really did as Bulldog has been on the opposite side of the map for all these plays. But look at where Fate is. Bulldog is like, I'm sorry, cuz. There's nothing I can do for you. This Yone is pushing hard on the top side. And he, somebody's got to check the Baron. And he was just straight up chain CC'd. I think maybe there was a, an opportunity to use a flash, but he was already so incredibly low that I think he would have just been dead anyway. 100%. I agree with you. And so may as well just not invest it, try and uh, live to fight another day. As Bro should be able to head on over and grab themselves their second Cloud Drake if they would like it. And keeping Jax in this top lane so incredibly smart yes. as well. Utilize the 1-3-1, one, one, 
use the rest of them to try and take this Drake. You're so far ahead, you don't need five people necessarily to win this fight. As a seismic shove, unfortunately, Polo is not going to be running away from you, Kwanong Freaks. He is very, very happy to fight, as Cuz is not. He's just going to get taken down, as Envy's in the back line, actually flashes away. The Wallop's going to go wide. The spacing's gorgeous. And man, I've been pretty critical of this guy, but that was an outplay if ever I've seen one. And bro, we're gonna, yeah, possibly just win. And Fate, I mean, he doesn't care about dying here. Uh, unless he just kills he both won't. of them. Okay, Leaper's gonna get knocked up. Can he actually do it? No. Leaper's now gonna be able to make his way home, but home is getting destroyed. And bro, Nexus turret number two gonna go down. The Nexus is finally going to fall in two games of the same series. And they will break the lost streak and find their first win of the season. Talking about going home, and Pro is going to go home as the first to cross the stage for the first time in LCK Summer here in 2024. They finally did it. She had her hands together. She was praying, and now she's praising <laughs> them like any true Pro Leaper would in this moment because today is the day they repeat history. Today is the day they prove again they're the kryptonite of the Kwangdong Freaks. And they next, okay, next time they check the schedule, Kwangdong Freaks start, they check it, and they see that the first match of round robin two is bro. They're gonna throw that back and say, Riot, you will change this. <laughs> we will not face the Breon bros in round two ever again, because every time they just get destroyed. And finally, our Lord has a smile on his face. And they finally played through him. I had, I didn't have faith that they were gonna- Yeah, Doib. I wanna see Doib next match as well, by the way. I mean, he was really good. I just did, I didn't think they were going to play through him. I didn't think they were going to get the Jacks ahead. I didn't think they were going to be able to win those topside grub fights. I thought we were going to see some more Cuz Talia action. I love the draft, but you know what? On the day, they just <laughs> threw him for a loop on the on the third game. Envy is doing his Zeri impression. He got eight kills. He was eight zero and two. He took the gold he was given, and he made the outplays in that final fight. And like you said, but you said it really well. Paulo's not running from anybody. No, nope. he wants to go in. And sometimes like. This is, that's what the read is normally on the Talia, right? Like you, you put down the seismic shove because you think as soon as you show, they're gonna run away. No, 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 no. That was, that was just not how he was playing. And you know, the, the way that that could have gone for Bro if they had just been playing sloppy macro like they did so many games in the series is they bring Morgan in because they wanna have a cool Counter-Strike combo and then, you know, Kwangdong back away and they waste their Baron buff to get a dragon that's like their third Cloud Dragon of the game. No, they put the Jax, who has Baron Buff, in the top lane, had him pushing, made Kwangdong come to them. It's basic macro, but bro, get it done this time around. And a zero and nine season becomes a one and nine season. For KT, when they were zero and four, they went five and four. I'm not ready to believe that hard, but this is a good look, let's say, for bro. Yeah, this is definitely the bounce back that they were looking for. And maybe this means that it's not going to be last place. You know, maybe this is their way out of the wooden spoon. Uh, there's still going to be a few more tests. And honestly, like, bro beating Kwandong, this is something that we've come to expect uh, from them this season. I mean, right now, they are actually, like, as far as regular season play, they have won three, lost one, as far as series against the Kwandong Freaks. So, I mean, they, they just know how to beat this team. Yeah, we just have to see whether they can use that now. Yeah, Kwangdong 2-0 to every East Side team except Bro. So yeah. we already knew that the likelihood of a game going over was going to be quite high. We've also seen the decline of Kwangdong's proactive plays. We've seen the decline of the proactivity between mid and jungle for this squad. And we've seen some patterns. And as hype as this is for Bro, we talked about the stakes at the beginning of this, how important it is for Kwangdong, how stressful it was for Bro. But they lose this one and Momentum is massively against them. We'll see what the rest of the round robin is going to look like, but I've seen this one before and it doesn't have a happy ending. It doesn't. The fact that Polu gets into the brush that they have sole vision of as well, absolutely massive. But this flash from Envy, I felt like it might have just been game over. They kill him and then they can actually fight, but that was, that was pretty well done by Envy. Yeah, look at how frantic the calls are. As again, this is two players who aren't on this normal roster. They're already has two revolving doors between mid and bottom anyways. Yep. 
And it's a little chaotic, and I think it gives us some insight here, but at the end of the day, the Coles are hyped here. Yeah, and I'm, I'm also just glad that they're making so many, right? Like, it's good to see the communication here from the pros. Of course, a little bit more obviously going to happen in their very first victory here. And that is a huge celebration and a very happy fate. To yeah. come in and actually give them that first win is so huge for this young player, making his way back into the LCK a player after that, taking a break. Yeah, a player that so many people had written off. A player that so many people, before he even took his break, we're saying, oh, he's, he fell off. You know, he's not the same fate we knew. You know, he's, yeah. he's he's not performing. I don't think he's a great mid laner anymore. We used to put him on the upper echelon. We put him bottom bottom of the tier now. He gets to come in and be the one of the main reasons why Bro was able to win their first series. He's got to be feeling fantastic. One of the most, most emotional days for the Bro fans of the year so far. Oh, 100%. And you even saw all of the crowd shots. There's so many fans in, like, just complete, completely emotionally distraught. And you could understand it. What an incredible day to be a bro lever. And I don't think any of us were on the predictions either. No. But we will hopefully have a check in. It is now time to head back to the space to celebrate the bro win. Thank you very much, guys. This is Jason for the POG interview translation. For the first time ever this season for the Bros. We are here joined by Polo and Fate after their very first victory of the season. Congratulations. All the Bro-leavers are waiting for this moment. Fate, it's been almost a year and you managed to get a win on your return match and uh, also win a POG, how do you feel? Yeah, you know, it felt a little bit dreamy to be on my way back to Low Park and winning POG of course feels amazing, but for me, I'm so glad that I was able to kind of contribute to the team in order to kind of bring my team back to the right trail and, you know, end the losing streak. What about you, Polu? Yeah, it was indeed a very long losing streak and we were all having a very hard time together, but none of the players or the coaching staff gave up, you know. Also, Joker joined our team and strategy coach, so all the teamwork finally paid off. Round one was very difficult for you guys. What did you focus on in order to overcome the hardships? There were a lot of games where we lost, even though we had a lot of, you know, leads in our hands. So we, but we just wanted to make sure that we never feel, you know, too regretful of the games that already happened. We just wanted to make sure that we still stay strong together. For me, I think I started practicing not long ago, you know, especially for us. It's been only a day since we last played the match for the first round Robin and made it back to the LCK. So I just wanted to kind of think to myself what we actually need to do in order to become a stronger team. And Polo, how does it feel to be on the team with Fate, who has a long experience? Yeah, of course, I think he was the missing puzzle that we needed, actually. I was able to learn so much. Anything that comes to your mind? Any specific advice from him? Oh, sorry, not really. <laughs> <laughs> because every single ah, yeah, words from me was very meaningful. I want to believe it that way. Faith, I want to go all the way back to the first game. Nar on the side of Kwangdong Freaks was getting very, very fed. So playing macro game against that champion was not easy for you guys. Yeah, so when they group up for team fights, it was really difficult for us to play out the fight. But still, I believed in our bottom duo, who was also scaling pretty well. And 
I knew that our team fight is still good, so we wanted to kind of play around the winning conditions for us and also try not to take fights when it's not on our side. Corky, so far, uh, is pretty strong right now, 5-1. How did you prepare that pick? I mean, I just, you know, didn't really have much time to practice many, many different picks. So Quirky was one of the champions that I practiced. And there was a little bit of a, you know, kind of a lot of change-ups, but still the champion is very similar. Not too much of a dra dramatic change, so I managed to just pull it off. So let's take a look at this replay where you were able to do so much damage. We had to take this fight and then both of our support who were the front lines got picked already. So I just wanted to stay proactive and finish up the Alistar. And then I was trying to zone away from the Yone, and I was pretty much fed at that point anyway, so I just wanted to make sure that I'm I'm just continuously dealing damage. After losing game two, I could sense a little bit of a change in your drafting, and I want to know about your blind pick Yone. Well, we thought A, Yone is pretty decent right now, and also B, I was, I was just feeling pretty confident that my Yone wouldn't really go, you know, bad. I was pretty confident in playing Yone and going 50-50 in lane, so I was pretty vocal, saying that I can just play around my confidence. And Pulu, you played Rel in Game 3 and won POG. Rel has dropped a little bit in terms of the support role uh, preference. So we were in a situation where we had to choose our champion, the bottom duo champions in the second phase. So, well, definitely one of the options that I'm always confident in. Also, we didn't really have much picks to go for in the second phase. Could you break down the team fight over here? Already, uh, Morgan, prior to this play, he was able to absorb so much um, aggro, so we knew that we had more major cooldowns, so we knew that we were in a really good spot to actually initiate a team fight, and we wanted to make sure that we are not avoiding fights here. We wanted to play when we are stronger than the opponents. And we have so many bro fans here at LCK Arena in tears after watching you guys getting the first win of the season. Well, I mean, I, did, I couldn't really see them cry, but still, like, the moment I took off my headset after winning game number one, I could hear our fans shouting and like chanting for us, so I was a little bit touched. Same, I couldn't actually like, see them cry, but I could tell that the chants and cheers were way louder than usual. Then tell us your resolution for the rest of the round too. Yeah, we had a very long losing streak in the first round. But with the support from the Berlivers, I will make sure to win more games starting today. And Fate, what about you? When I joined the Bro, I mentioned that as a player, I just want to become a big motivation to my teammates and also a bit of a happiness for the fans. You know, I just wanted to make sure that everyone stays happy by watching us play. So I want to make sure that I can accomplish that goal. And this will be the end of the interview from Faith, Polo, and back to the space. Thank you.